Tommy Boy on Talk Sport. Tommy Boy. Tommy Boy radio experiment. It does exactly what it says in the paper. Mmm, I smell bacon. Let's get us up when you are right now. Let's go straight to the lines and see who's there. It's the Human Zoo on Talk Sport. Good evening, line one. Do we say who's there? Best friend. Ah, in the whole world. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know where I live, won't you? not be a stranger. Oh, no, we won't be. Good. Always be a kettle on here. Oh, great. <laughs> No idea, but thank you, line one. To line two, you're on the human zoo. Go Boy, Tommy, I'm trying to get a bit of kip down here. I'm sorry. Shut up! I'll keep it down. Line... Nice one. Line three, you're on. Hello. Good morning, campers. I'm the you first run down the switchboard. Let's see who's on four. Thank you for that. Line five. Um, I've got some audio. Excellent. Hello, sir. Remember me? I'm the man you thought I'd never be. The boy who you reduced to tears. The lad called Thingy for six whole years. Yeah, that's right. My name's Bob. The one who landed the pop star's job. The one who you told Luke's don't touch. The kid who wouldn't amount to much. Well, I'm here, and you're still there, with your fake sports car and receding hair, dodgy fire trousers that you think are smart, married to the woman that teaches art, married to the life, married to the school. I want to sing and dance, sir. Now, who's the fool? Sing and dance? You thought I was balmy. Settle down, thing, you. Join the army. And who are you to tell me this? The dream I want, I'm happy miss. Sir, is God. He's been given the right to structure lives overnight. Now I know life's true path. Tanks and guns, that'll be a laugh. No, not me. I'm like a civilian. I won't need my life riding pillion. But that's the advice and I'm sure it'll do for the negative dickheads just like you. As for now, a different weapon. The stage and screen is about to beckon. And here I sit in first class. Bollocks, sir. Kiss my ass. That's no way to talk to his career's advisor. I don't see the damn right way to talk to your you career. You should have listened to him. Uh, Join the army. Yeah. It would have made a man of him. Become a lance yeah, corporal. Mate. Nice one, fella. Yeah. This is Line 6. Hey there, Line 6. I like traffic lights. I like traffic lights. I like traffic lights, but not when they are red. I like traffic lights. I like traffic lights. I like traffic lights, although my name's not Bamba. 
No, I thought his name was Bamba, man. No, no idea. That was a terrific first run down the switchboard. And that's how it works. It's the human zoo. Uh, we take calls without screening them. People go straight through to air. They can make a point that's been missed in the debate so far, if that's what they want to do. But generally speaking, people seize the opportunity to express themselves. Fire somebody else if they've got a piece of audio that they think does it best for them. Or sometimes, as in a couple of callers that we had in the first six there, uh, they just do their own thing down the phone. Keep it down to about 30, 45 seconds, something like that. If you can't get your point across in 30 seconds, then your point ain't worth getting across. Um, 30 seconds is good enough. It's, it's why commercials are 30 seconds long. Uh, you know, you can get everything. You can say it all in 30 seconds. Some are 10 seconds. Some are 10 seconds. Yeah, and the shorter yeah. the better with many of the contributions yeah. to the human zoo. But that was an absolutely cracking first run down the switchboard. Keep it clean, keep it lawful, and then we'll be, be able to um, <coughs> uh, leave our fingers off the dump button this evening. Excellent. Great start. I'm Tommy Boyd. It's the Human Zoo on Talk Sport. Ash is here. You all right, man? Yep, I'm all right. You all right? Oh, yeah, never been better tonight. Have you never been better? Never been better. I always say that, don't I, dear? No. Tonight's the night. Tonight is the night. I think you've got to see your life like that, you know, the moment. The moment is the yeah. thing. You know, yeah. tonight's the night. You've got to say that every minute of every day. Keep that tune going round your head. This is my moment. Yeah. All the time. Once in a lifetime. Oh eight seven oh four twenty twenty twenty. Now if the switchboard's solid, you can email the human zoo, talksport.net, click the button that says email the show. And uh, Ash will be getting to the email machine for the first time about ten or fifteen minutes. So you just you try and stop me. Yeah. Hey, monkey. Hello, fella. You're, this is line one. Look Hello, at me, monkey. Hey, monkey. Look at me, monkey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Go on, my son. <laughs> <laughs> Does that feel good? Look at me, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Knockout. Very surreal mood uh, settling over the show this evening already. Hello. Line two, you're on the human zoo. Have you got the tape ready to go or not? Did you hear that? Yeah. Have you got the tape ready to go? Yeah, I've got the tape ready. Have you got the tape ready to go or not? No, we've, we've missed it, Tommy. Oh, oh God. Do you know what I'm going to do, though? Go on. I'll, I'll give you a ring in about five minutes when we got the tape ready. I would. Yeah, because then, then I can play it to my mate. Persevere. Because we respect you so much. Persevere. All right? All right. God right. bless, mate. Yeah, God bless, God bless. <laughs> Line three, you're on the Human Zoo on Talk Sport. Hello. Why are all Welsh people tossers? And to line four. Good evening, line four. They're not, are they? No, no, no well, not, uh, possibly. I, I think most of the same proportion as uh, 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 the rest uh, uh, of the in nation. In all probability. There aren't statistics. Thankfully. Who'd want to see those numbers? Uh, Line four, you're on the human zoo. A ship jumper. Someone jumped ship the minute they were live on air. Go on. Right, well, what seems to be the problem? Well, I've got a pretty sore neck. Okay, well, I'll just have a little... Mm. How's that? That? Ah, um, that? Mm, one? Mm. Yes, you could try sticking this. I think I'll take that out. I think we'll take that out. I think we knew where that one was going. That was agile fingers there, Ash. Yeah. Good evening, line six. I still want to have your children. Fantastic, babe. Send a stamp to dress envelope. What a, cra what a cracking switchboard we've got tonight, I tell you. Everybody's absolutely right in the block hole. In the zone. Yeah. Line one, hi. Hello. Hello. Can I speak to Ash? You sure can. Ash? Yes? What's your full name? I uh, can't uh, disclose that for security reasons, but uh -huh. you can call me Asher Bojolan McGuire. It doesn't matter what your name is. Well, that's true. It's a wrestling thing. We should all have number. is it? It's a wrestling thing. It doesn't matter what your name is! Who says that then? I can't Stone remember. Stone Cold Steve Austin. I, I, I can't remember. Someone will tell us. Line two, you're on the human zoo. Hello. Hello. Well, Master Richard. Say that. Ask your question again. He's gone. Line three. Tommy! Hey! Alright, Tommy! Sir. All right, Mitch, all right, you know, me and my mates, we all think Ash is a bit of a knob. You wouldn't say that. You he's wouldn't, a bit, he's you a, wouldn't he's say a, that to my face. A, yes, I would. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. You come down here and say that to me. Okay. But he hasn't said anything okay. yet. You've got, a, you, you've got the attitude, you've got to bring it. Yeah, I'll bring it. 
bring it. Well, well you haven't, have you? You just pitched up on the phone, you coward. Yeah, you're, you're really scaring me, man. You don't talk the talk. No, don't stop it. You really. You... Bring it on, Ash. Bring it on. Bring what on? Bring it on. He's not interested in you. Go to bed. Right, he, right, he, give me that. He's not interested in you. See, I'll tell you what we're getting, a little bit of the old email culture. Have you noticed with emails, yeah. people are a bit yeah. braver than they would be in real yeah. life, oh, you know. Yeah. You know, they're curt and, uh, you know, a bit, a bit ha yeah. feisty. And then oh. he said arsey then, feisty. Yeah. We're getting a little bit of that on the switchboard. I, I like know. it, I like a bit of that. As long as it doesn't go too far, I'm not yeah. bothered. I'm not bothered. Yeah. Line four, you're on the human zoo. Mike Dicking is a rather large man. He is the human zoo's biggest fan. He phones the zoo every Sunday night. When he does, He's high as a kite. He presses redial with a childlike grin, waiting to utter the famous phrase, You love Mike Dickin. I tell you, it's quality tonight, isn't it? Quality. It's almost too well written tonight. Think how many man hours it would take to put this show yeah. together after People are going to start asking questions. They are. They are. If, if we were doing this artificially, yeah. you know, it would take a team of six working flat out. 24 hours a day. 24 7. For the week. Mm. Line five, you're on the human zoo. I am against squashed muffins. Twenty twenty twenty. if you want to have a try. Um, but there's competition tonight. People are good. Line six, you're on the human zoo. Yeah. You can't have it. I saw them earlier today. This guy's good. good. Don't ask what sort of people they are. Those are people out there, like you and me. They look like you and me. But that's all we know about them. About their minds, their motives, we know nothing. They may have something. Something Earth has a chance to text. Okay, if this is a flare on Earth, then when? That rock has power, energy, intelligence, and purpose. Oh, it's seven zero four twenty twenty twenty. That's the number. Or you can email the Human Zoo with comments. Keep it down to a paragraph or so, and let us know your real name if you like and where you're um, emailing from. Talksport.net. Click the button that says email the show. This is the Human Zoo. There's nothing else quite like it. You're listening to the radio by yourself. Everyone else is living a perfect world, and you're stuck listening to the radio by yourself. Look, try the Talksport single connection. It's the easiest way of finding someone in your area who's sitting there right now in exactly the same frame of mind as you. Call 0870-243-6907 and leave a few details about yourself and let the system do the rest. It's easy, there's no obligation and it's totally confidential. Just call the number 0870-243-6907. It works. 0870-243-6907. Calls charged at national rates. The school holidays are here. <laughs> Them fun and get out on a half price Virgin Value Fair. A London to Blackpool returns from £12.50. Selected trains and conditions apply, subject to availability. You must travel off peak and book in advance only at virgin.com slash trains or by calling 08457 <coughs> Mother, will you please button it? Virgin Trains is a part of the National Rail Network. National Rail, it's time to return. Um, 
in and out and in and oh, in again. Right leg to the left, left leg off. Feel that burn. Mike Dickin does current affairs because he can't do aerobics. Mike Dickin in the morning. Essential current affairs and conversation tomorrow morning from 10 on Talk Sport. This is your assignment. The hatred of the nation against an impish has been Tommy Boy throwing a bone to the yapping dogs on Talk Sport. <laughs> Come on then, we're ready for you. Oh yeah. Ash is on his toes after that last call. Yeah, I want him to come and say it to my face. You'd get him. Yeah. It's the Human Zoo on Talk Sport. We take calls live, unscreened and pretty much at random. If you call the show, uh, you'll hear some messages from Talk Sport. Uh, stay tuned, keep listening to the phone. Um, you're stacked. That means you're stacked. You're in the mix, okay? As soon as the messages change to either, well, silence or, or me saying hi line, whatever it is, that means you're on and away you go. Most people have kind of got all this, but this is just for newcomers. Let's go to line one and see who's there. Hi, line one. Hello? Hello? Yes, um, I would like to speak about the Middle East. The Middle East? Correct, yes. Correct. I, I can't understand some one thing. Why do the Palestinians call assassinations when Israel targets Hamas militants? When they admit that these militants are dying suicide attacks against Israel. Fascinating question, and it's so rich and interesting that I'm going to spend time masticating over it, perhaps for the rest of my life. Thank you for that. Line two, you're on Talk Sports Human Zoo. Every time you tune to Radio 1, this is what they're playing. I think there's only one song at the moment. Yeah, this is it. Appalling, yeah. isn't it, really? Uh, it really is sad, the, the state of, yeah, um, poor kids. of popular, popular music. Let's go to line three. Hi, line three, you're on the Human Zoo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Tommy, could you say many socks? Ten times in a row, really fast. No. You can't. I won't. Can you? Yes. Yeah. Right. No. Why not? I don't know. I don't feel like it, really. Should I? We'll try it later. What's in it for me? Nothing, but you, I go to one of yours. And to line four. Good evening, line four. You're on the human zoo. Don't leave your hair in the sink. Oh, God. It's okay. I'm so sorry. Keep the shower clean. <laughs> don't. Don't. Thank you, disturbing. Thank you for that, line four. Line five. All right, Tommy. Hey. All right, James here. I'll try to get some showers, bruv. Yeah. I'll shout. I want to give showers to my mate, Stephen, my brother Ray. And I'm sure to Mick, Colin and Gary. Have right. you really got a brother right. called Ray? Yeah. How old is he? Uh, about 20 odd. He always yeah. rings up. You might uh, hear him in a minute. I thought Ray, you know, was a name that kind of went out around about 15, 20 years ago. You know, you didn't get many nah, Rays. Nah, it's a modern name. It's not. Nah, he's a right bloke. You don't get, I mean, Ray Parley, yes, but I haven't heard of any, any other Ray. Yeah? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Looks like Ray Charlie, Dim Charlie Dimmock, doesn't he? Anyway, a little bit, that's true. A little bit. Um, thank you for that. Did you see the gay uh, magazine voted? Um, oh no, I don't read those. No, I, mean, I know, well, you, I know you read them all. Oh, I'm an avid reader. Yeah, uh, they voted Manchester United uh, the best-looking football team in the country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the best-looking players were Alan Smith. Is it Alan Smith? What from Arsenal? The, uh, the ex-Arsenal player? No, not Alan Smith. What's no, his name? No, 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 no. The, the Leeds laddie. The Leeds. Yeah, that's Alan Smith. Alan Smith. That's, that's Alan. Alan Smith. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, Alan Smith. Alan Smith. Yeah. Smith. And David Beckham, obviously, and, Ma and Michael Owen. I thought but David James was always like me. Oh, you'd have thought, wouldn't you? They voted, um... Not since his nose got smacked in that Arsenal, game. the ugliest team in the league. Well, it's always been like that. Always been a little bit. They were, well, Alan Smith, as I was saying. You're, you're, you always calls me that. Tony Adams. 
Oh eight seven oh four quick. Oh eight seven oh well done. Seven oh four twenty twenty twenty. Line six, good evening. The moon is full. Yeah, I, is it, it? Is a, it is a foolish moon and it always affects us. Oh no. Is it? Where is it? If you're driving along or just tuned in and you're wondering what this is, it's a thing on Talk Sport. Welcome, called the Human Zoo. We, uh, on a Sunday evening, we, we try to sort of tap into the way most people are feeling on a Sunday night when, whether you've got, like, work or college, school, university, whatever, whatever if you've got commit, you might have commitments in the morning, you might not, but even if you haven't, Sunday night is still a slightly sort of anarchic, there's a kind of, you feel, you yeah. don't want to, yeah, you'd rather be somewhere else in the week. You'd rather be somewhere else. You'd rather be somebody somewhere else in some other week than on a Sunday night in your own life. And yeah. makes you a little bit sort of um, restless. And mm. especially when there's a full moon, which there is tonight. Mind you, I have to say that the switchboard has never been better. So yeah. far, I'd give it a 10. Occasionally a 10. 9.8. Yeah, Are you tink well? Any, have tinkering. You, have you had a good week or what? Yeah, yeah. I have. Yeah, it's been uh, all Highlights, right, yeah. lowlights? Uh... The highlight, yes. Uh, well, it, it would have been uh, that Breville toasty I made. Oh, yeah. it was really delicious. You know, what, what was in it? Garnish. What was in it? Uh, but it was, a, I think, it was a mature cheddar. Oh, lovely. But, but not, a, you know, just you know, it was specifically. Fun. Your roof, the roof of your mouth needs to know you're eating cheese, or it else, it, or else it's not cheese. You need to talk to the roof of your mouth. It's whack. And tell it. That's where you get it, and that's why in our house we like the blue veined. Oh, I can't, no. I can't no? No, is that too much? It's too much. Okay. I did have four days where I liked it, and then I... There. It's too much. Too yeah. much. You're a capricious man. Capricious. Capricious. Yeah. Oh eight seven zero four twenty 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 is the number. The Human Zoo on Talk Sport. Let's rush down the switchboard again. It's been going so well. I almost don't want to spoil it. Come on, line one, your turn www.icomba.com And line two. Hello, line two. Good evening, Tommy. Good evening. Hello. Oh, uh, you probably won't remember me. I was campaigning against old people. Would you, could I say a few words against old people tonight? By all means, bearing in mind that these are your views and not the views of Talk Sport. Yes. Uh, yeah, these are my views. Uh, can I just tell you a story of what happened to me on the golf course the other day? Sure. I was uh, walking up the golf course and me and my friend were stalled for 25 minutes on the short 320 yard fifth hole because of an old geriatric fool who couldn't carry his clubs without taking about three seconds to move a step. Isn't that a crime against humanity, Tommy? Old people? Did you manage to, to, to get down in anything approaching par? Yes. What did you score on this 320 yard, presumably par well, four? It was uh, a bogey. You got a five? Yeah. Very nice. It was all right. And thank you for your views, 08704. The highlight, <laughs> since, you, since, since you're asking line two, mm -hmm. the highlight of my week was buying a hybrid club. A hybrid club? Have you ever played with a hybrid club? Uh, no. They're very, very good. What's yes? a hybrid club? Well, it's a, it's a wood iron. Ah, wood iron. It's a wood iron. I bought a three wood iron. Mm -hmm. Doesn't so, it feel to me. Really? Well, it's got it's got arguably the control of an iron. You see, yeah. and the distance of a wood, mm. and so a nice fat shaft. So you for accuracy. Ooh. Yes. Mm. And uh, one of the big manufacturers make a really powerful one that a lot of the good players now have in their bag oh. for two hundred quid. But I managed to pick mm. one up new for forty five. So I recommend Ooh. it. Forty five. Forty five. Tommy, you have paid forty five. So I, you, I, I didn't know you play golf. I don't. Oh, you just like clubs. I do. I like the whole thing. I like practicing and the whole thing, but I ain't very good. Um, so I recommend a, a hybrid club to you, young whippersnapper, regardless of the fogies on your golf course. Thank you very much, Tommy. Not at all. 08704. 20, 20, 20. Or well, you can email us, talksport.net. You know the works. Let's go to line three. Hi, line three. On Brass Pie, as Scottish football crumbles around our faces, we ask, is this SP hell? Scotland, 2001. As our national sport flushes down the sewage drain, what can we do to stop the whole sorry mess creating a stink wave like so much mad cow beef in a ventilator shaft? 
Conrad Oscillator speaks these words. Thanks, Chris. You join me in the north of Scotland, where a decimation of the Highland League, due to their top end clubs skittering off to join the SFL, has seen a massive overswell in the amount of excess footballers in the region. To counteract this, the local authorities have introduced a selective cull on players in contiguous stadia, as our hidden microphone now reveals in all its brutality. <laughs> and gut-popping manner, these slack-jawed farmer boys are being scythed down, quite literally, with their own side. This truly is who are Megadon, Chris. Thanks, Conrad. But it's not just a cousin bundlet. Even our metropolitan dwelling folks are in a trouble danger. And things really are so far out of our grasping hands that they now merit a somber voiceover from a concerned celebrity. Oh, hello, Braveheart. People around the country have burst their faces with tears over the news that the old firm was set to move down to the English Premiership. What they don't realise is that the plans are more advanced than first thought. The Glasgow Giants are looking to dismantle their entire stadia before remantling them on Brighton Beach, leaving the residents of Paisley and Coatbridge having to support their local teams. And what of our players? Unsurprisingly, the complexities of modern-day football have left their brains as swollen as an old man's prostrate. As Vivacity underwriter now reports with her mouth, Vivacity... Yes, Chris. Things have got so crunched up... And it's very good. I think it's somebody else's. I thought that for a minute it was original, but I don't want to play stuff from other radio stations to any great extent, which is what I presume that was, was it? I, I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. I mean... I thought the national sport in Scotland was... I thought they always... It was, um... Yeah? Tossing cabers. Well, they do that for the tourists in much is the same way. Is that not what they all do? Like in, in much the, the same way as they change the guard outside Buckingham Palace. It's, it's not tourists. what they do on a Sunday afternoon. No, 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 no. Good mm. God, no. No, 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 no. They're not all Rob Roy's, you know. Line five, you're on the human zoo. You spoilt my illusion. Well, look at that thing. Yep. Because he's mad with it. In no way, you big spastic, you're mentally... <laughs> Thank you. Line six. Hello. Hello. It's halfway through an email to you. Then we had a park up. I shall now read the email. Name, Ray McKeown. Age, 19 to 24. Comments. Dear Thomas, I would like to make a point missed in the debate on Friday night. With reference to the woman talking about the F word. I have one word. Fantastic. Okay, that's cool. That's fair enough, isn't it? If you can't get your email off, phone it in. Well, yeah, I mean, find it in if you want, and, um, yeah. Yeah, but it's not really how it's meant to, you know, the whole point of email is you don't have to do that. But he had a power cut. So well, presumably uh, he had to... you know, it's not our problem. He had to reboot. Just candles. You have to reboot if you have a power cut. If you're on your computer and it's mm. lying, the whole thing has to crank well, up again. Well, not necessarily. You should actually have a backup power supply generator. And you get, who's got one of them? And you get a display of all the software that it's you've downloaded enough, that you don't need. You know, what? Well, it's not good enough, is it? Have you got a generator? Yeah. No. You haven't. I have. I used to have a generator. Yeah. Yeah. I used to own a generator. Yeah. Yeah, mine... The, uh, the, blo the bloke who sold it to me openly said it was nicked. Really? <laughs> yes. What, and you bought it? Um, well, uh, he said, when I say openly said it was nicked, he, he said, just don't ask any questions. I said, well, uh -huh. well I, I, was, I was desperate, because I was in a house that didn't have any power. Um... Well, I'm afraid I must have... And I had to get the central uh, heat... I must arrest you now. It probably was an arrestable offence at the time, but... Uh, well, it still is, actually. Oh, but you know... No, well, I'm sorry. Happened. You can tell it to the judge. Maybe he was just trying to, e you know, move the sale along by making the good seem somehow sexier. Because people well, do I'm like... Well, sorry, you'll, you can tell that to the judge. He's oh. mitigating circumstances. Is that it? Yeah. Sorry, mate. Mm. So. Damn. Oh, 0870402020 or talksport.net, you know the works, if you want to send a, the human zoo an email. Line one. Tommy? Hey. Um, you used to be a comedian, didn't you, of some sort? Yes, I, I, I two year, two seasons as a stand-up comic. It was terrible. Could you tell, like, any good jokes? I told, well, the best jokes you can't tell because they're too good for the audience. When you're doing the stand-up comedy I was doing, yeah. which, which literally was, you know, a man goes into a pub, or dare I say it, an Englishman, an Irishman, a Scotsman, or my mother-in-law. Oh, yeah. Because that's all the comedy there was in, you know, then, in the 70s. Um, the audience, quite frankly, aren't up for some of the quality stuff that you'd like to do. Are your jokes on the same sort of like level as um, Andy Jacobs? Is? They're not my jokes. Nobody makes their own jokes up. You, you take jokes and you, 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 as you're telling a joke, you work out where the audience is going and therefore what needs to be the next joke. But they're never your own, so <laughs> I don't have any jokes. All right. Since you asked. Oh, there yeah. he goes. Yeah.
all in the delivery, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. The best joke of all was the man who goes for an eye test, and the uh, originally it was an Irishman, but you, then you change that to an idiot or something like that, you know, or or, or an Aston Villa supporter goes for an eye test, and uh, the optician says, "Cover your right eye with your left hand and read that board," and he has trouble distinguishing his left hand from his right hand, and his left eye from his right eye, and this goes on for a couple of minutes, and you get a little bit of comedy. So then the optician goes out the back, empties out a packet of cornflakes, cuts a single eye hole in the box, comes in and pushes it down over the man's head so that he's just looking out the one hole. And he's about to say, read that board, when the man's shoulders start to heave and he's crying. And the optician says, what's the matter? Yeah. And the uh, man says, it's just that I hoped I'd get a gold-rimmed pair like my brother. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Why, the, why did he put the cornflake thing in his head? So that the man wouldn't have to work out for himself how, which eye to cover with which hand. Right, where he was an optician? He, no, no, the man on the man in the seat was having to work out. He was covering his own eyes, you see. Yeah, but the other guy was an optician. He was an optician and... And he, he had to use a cornflake packet. Well, he couldn't... He didn't have he didn't anything have else to hand that would enable the man to close... Was he not in the opticians? Close one eye or open... In those days, again, you know, opticians weren't as well equipped. It was all no. national health then, you see. Yeah, but they had those things with... And you put they the do black, now. You put the black now. lens in and they that do blocks now. off the eye. Oh, yeah, they do now. That's because it's all private, you see, and they want to fleece you for as much as they can whilst you're in the chair. So the more technology to bamboozle you with, yeah. the easier it will be to take 45 quid off you. It's true. See my gene? That is See? very So they used to use cornflake packets. But it was a very good joke because of the bit about I hoped I'd get a gold rimmed pair like my brother because that then speaks of a load of stuff about the man's motives for wanting glasses in the first place which is to, you know, appear as intellectual as other members of his family. So I just thought it was good. I personally think that's the best joke I know. It's funny that is. It's alright. There are worse. 08704 20, 20, 20 since the man asked. Or you can email the Human Zoo, as I said before, you know the score. If you get to your PC, go to talksport.net, have a roam around, excellent website, uh, and you want the button that says email the show. I'm Tommy Boyd, this is Talksport. Ash is here. Ask yourself, what music reflects your mood? This. This. Or maybe this. However you're feeling, here's a collection of music to reflect your every mood. It's called, quite simply, Moods. 64 mood-enhancing tracks to soothe you, to relax you, to put you in the mood for whatever. Moods is all yours on four CDs for $29.99 plus $2.50 post and packing. Delivered to your door within 14 days and your money back if you're not completely satisfied. You won't find moves in any shop. Only by calling 08705-445566. In the mood yet? 08705-445566. This is the sound of a car crashing at 35 miles an hour. Here it is again in slow motion. That strange sound is the passenger hitting the windscreen. That weird sound is his head fracturing. That crack is a leg breaking. And that's the sound of a seatbelt being fastened. Think. Always wear a seatbelt. On 10.89 and 10.53 a.m. Evening, Sunday night on Talk Sport is Zoo Time. From 10, after Steve's fine uh, delve into the uh, world of high politics, we open the phone lines and if you call, you come through to air unscreened. Nobody asks you who you are and what you want to say gives people a chance to really express, really express what's deep in their breast on a Sunday night, which is usually some kind of angst, because it's Monday in the morning. We started off, of course, with people wanting to make points that have been missed in the debate so far, but the spine of the show has become very much just people wanting to well, give a little performance or, or an expression of how they feel. Oh eight seven zero four twenty 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 2020 is the number. It's ideal for a Sunday night. You normally stop for that crescendo bit there. Yeah. Well, I just let it happen. I, 
I can do all that. Do you want me to? Well, it's too late now, we've passed it. I think if you listen to it again, you'll hear there it. Is I, another I, one, isn't it? I hit it just right, but, but the, we were both talking then. You can't talk up the lyrics together. No. Alright, you know. There we go. Go to line one. Line one, was that good enough for you? Yeah, that was nice. That line one, you're live on the human zoo. Hi, Tommy. Hey. Um, I know you're quite closely involved with Port and SFC, and I'd just like to pass on my commiserations about Aaron Southern and say, that's it must be pretty depressed for you for everybody at the club. That's much appreciated. It was a huge shock this morning, of course, and I've been in contact with um, the rest of the supporters club, and, uh, well, people really are just, re uh, just you know, shattered, really. It's, he, he was a good goalkeeper, and he, yeah. was, he was a nice man. He was a good guy. I, was, I only sort of, I, I, I can't say I knew him, yeah. um, but I was sort of standing in a circle of people talking from time to time and he'd be there after matches. And he, yeah. was, he was a good lad. He really was a nice guy. Um, so when the dust settles, we, we're going to decide at Portsmouth Supporters Club, um, I'm chairman of the, my local branch, what, yeah. what we're going to do about it. Um, he had a family uh, and it may be that that's some, something we could think about um, yeah. making our, our respect known um, with some involvement with his family but at this moment thank you for that That's okay. all, all, all we football fans can do is just shake our heads yeah but um good luck for the rest of the season anyway I hope thank you. you recover from this Pre oh. appreciate that thank you uh, and hi Ash by the way oh, he's at the email machine but I'll say you said hi when he comes back actually he'll have heard because we've got the radio on obviously in the uh, email room Let's go to line two. Hi, line two, you're on the human right. zoo. What yeah. that? Right. Let's go to line three. Line three, you're on the human zoo. Oh, sorry, Al. No, 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 no. I'm not sure if we can do Derek and Clive. I'd love to do Derek and Clive. I would love, I would love to play Derek and Clive. I can think of three sketches I know you'd love and you're grown up enough, everybody is. Um, and sensible enough to deal with it, but I think it's probably just a bridge <coughs> too far um, in August 2001 at 10.40 at night on a Sunday. Maybe, I don't know. I'll speak to the powers. Line four, you're on the human zoo. Hello, Tommy. Hello. This is uh, Squidman here. Squidman. Yes, I have a message for uh, Mr. Fish. Uh, I want the goods in the briefcase. And, Tommy. Sir. You love fish pie. So we all do. Who wouldn't love a nice fish pie? Let's pick up line five. Hey, five. Confucius say, man with splayed buttocks has great difficulty walking. <laughs> Confucius very rarely said anything, actually. He just tended to point or indicate things with his eyes. As I understand it, but uh, thank you for that. I don't know what splayed buttocks are. Hash might know. Line six, you're on the human zoo. Hello? Hello? Hello. Didn't you think. Hello? Hello? Yes, you've got the radio on, you see. Yes, I, I do understand that, yes. Um, no, you didn't, you otherwise really you wouldn't have said hello back to yourself the third time when you heard it coming out of the radio. Oh, well, there you go. Do you think really Michaela Strachan is worth a whack a day? Several, and I don't think I'd uh, get, I don't think I'd run into much opposition on that one. Let's go to line one. Line one, you're on the human zoo. Look at them up there in the window, looking at me down here. Boy, wouldn't they be surprised if they knew what I'm planning for them? A great new super production featuring the great. Superstar! That's nice, thank you. Um, Very pleasant. There's a hiccup with the email machine at the moment, I understand. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so not all the processors uh, are... No, I don't, have, I don't have those passwords that you need to hand there to access it the, the way that you suggested off-air just now, so I'm sorry. 
I thought we might as well say it on air, it's easier than me. Yeah. Just, I can't mime. No, I don't yeah, have no, my password, password, username and log on details because I, I, I rarely use the computer system here at Talk Sports. I'm tending to talk to people. As you do. It's good to talk. As you do. Oh eight seven oh four twenty twenty twenty. Line three, you're on the human zoo. This is Cyril, the wasp, at the zoo. And I would like to talk about the legalisation and decriminalisation of cheese. Yes, it is a sad reflection on our global village that many people are ostracised from society for using cheese for recreational use. I myself started off using soft cheeses, but I've never been tempted to use harder dairy produce. If we are sensible, we can keep those who choose to abuse cheese under control by rehabilitating them back into society and restricting them to those dry, horrible, cheesy biscuits. Good night. Yeah, but they, they don't replace it, do they, really? What? The cheesy biscuits. Don't replace cheese? No. No. I mean, when you come enough cheese, they don't help in any way. I've all. never found a cheese biscuit that I liked. No. When you're in a hotel and you have a, you know, a restaurant and... Yeah. And they bring around the sweet trolley and uh, ew. Mm. so you say, could I have some cheese, please? Yeah. Um, they'll bring you a selection of cheeses, but also a selection of cheese biscuits, and they're all yeah, just they're no good. Not very nice. Apparently, in Switzerland, yeah. there's a pilot sort of system going on, and they're trying, they're actually weaning people off cheese by giving them cheese. Well, a sort of I a know that sounds mad, but they actually homeopathic. Cure. No, they give them the cheese, but under observation. Ah, they won't. You know, you can't just go and have the cheese. But uh, it's, it, it, the figures are incredible when you look at it. I'll tell you what's odd. You know Parmesan, which it comes mm, in very, very big, yeah. hard blocks? Well, you can also get it, of course, in the powdered form. Yes, you can. Very dangerous. Don't substance. like that. Um, I'm always surprised that people don't eat Parmesan by itself. It's got to be grated onto pasta or, or something mm. because it's a delicious mm. cheese. And if you take a potato peeler... It's lovely, isn't it? ...and just pull off a shard yeah. of Parmesan... It's beautiful. And just look both ways to make sure nobody's looking and woof that down. Yeah, it'll keep you buzzing for about, ooh, yeah. long enough. Yeah. Oh, 08704 20, 20, 20. But don't abuse it. No. Foundation presents. And in 40 minutes, basketball from the United States, NBA 2000. This is LWT. A revelation from Tommy Boyd amazes talk for listeners. From ICN, the news at 10, presented by Stephen Hawking. On the radio program earlier today on Talk Sport. Tommy Boyd made an announcement which surprised many thousands of people across the country. Mike Dickin is having an affair with Timmy Mallet. In a telephone interview, he had this to say. I'm fine, hi. Good evening, Mr. Boyd. This is Stephen Hawking from the News at 10. Oh, good. Do you condone the relationship between Mike Dickin and Timmy Mallet? I don't. You ask? No, I don't. Do you think it will be a great loss to radio broadcasting if Mike Dickin loses his job? Not really. But the newspapers are reporting that he is getting a lot of pressure to quit his job. No, I wonder if the gay people are going to get cross about that. And in the A's you used to present the Wide Awake Club with Timmy Mallet? You no, know, that, that is one of the, that, that, that's one of the most unsung treasures there is. And do you have a lot of admiration for Timmy Mallet? I do. Well, I personally don't have any. He doesn't. None at all. Finally, what program do you think will win the title of the greatest children's TV show of all time? Um, Nightmare. Thank you for your time, Mr. Boyd. Goodbye. That's stunning. I loved Line 5. More on this story can be found by visiting TommyBoyd.50Meg.com. That's all for now from the news at 10. Good night. <laughs> They're getting a bit good, some of these yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> getting a bit good. This is great. I think. We might have to stop it if it gets too good. We'll, we'll, we'll keep moving. We'll keep moving. Judah. Hello. Judah. Yeah. Yeah. This Who's is. There? You are. Hey. You are. Did you hear what? 
He gone. That'll happen. It's that bloke, isn't it? Uh, uh, he wants some, doesn't he? Probably. He's oh, asking, him. He's asking for it, isn't he? Yeah, you, 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 yeah. He wants it. Yeah. You're really on your toes tonight, aren't you? Jesus loves Mike Dickens. God knows why. A lot of people love Mike Dickens. What does the H stand for in Jesus H Christ? Harold. Oh. Everyone knows that. Did you not know that? No. Yeah, he's Harry. And where was Richard Branson's airship on Friday night? Yeah, that's a point. I think it probably was a dirigible. That's what I think. It was a dirigible. And could it be that I'm a traveller, like Ash? Because on the planet I come from, James Whale, Charlie Wolfe and Mike Dickon are all fart-brained twits. Thank you for that. Line three, you're live on Talk Sports Human Zoo. Good evening. You're a big man, but you're out of shape. Hello, James. You're a big man, but you're out of shape. Now, this is my job. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. Front rank, fire! Rear rank, advance! Line four, you're live on Talk Sports Human Zoo. <laughs> Do you know that joke that ends like that? No. <laughs> you know about the one about the traveller who arrives, it's pouring with rain, his car breaks down, so he knocks on a farmhouse door. Mm. And the farmer says to him, yes, you can sleep here the night, you'll have to share a bed with my beautiful daughter, but if you touch her, if you so much as touch her, then uh, I'll blow your brains out. And they says, fine, and uh, the daughter comes down in her nightdress, and she's a beautifully um, equipped 21-year-old blonde and so forth. I can't tell the joke, not just yet, I'll tell it after 12. When we get into the end. Keep that in your mind. I will, I will, I will, but it ends... <laughs> Line five, you're live on Talk Sports Human Zoo. Oh, sorry, wrong number, man. I do know a joke that ends like that. Go on. I can't, no, I can't say it. Uh, we'll do it after 12. No, I can't go. even do mine after 12. You can't even do it in the XL? No. <gasps> must be bad. Hello, yeah, line six. Yeah, it must be bad. It's must bad, be bad, man. I want to hear it. Yeah, I know, that's the thing about jokes, isn't it? When you're told you can't hear them, you want to hear I'll them. I'll tell Tommy. Yeah. Hey, how come the watershed doesn't seem to apply I know. to radio? I know. A, a lot of people have said this to me. They've said, why is it that we can be watching a bit of telly and they're, they're going at it hammer and tongs and the language yeah, and everything and the blood. There's blood coming out of every orifice and wound. Um, but on the radio, still, people aren't allowed, you know, to express themselves. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I do not know. It's almost as though... Radio is more like sort of the Catholic Church, and, and television has this um, this sort of Jekyll and Hyde um, attitude towards more. I don't know. Right. Well, anyway, um, I've got someone here who you love, actually. It's Mike Dickens' chicken. Zebedee.twentym.com. <laughs> See, with chickens, you can very easily get people to create images in their own mind. You can just sort of go like this. You see, what's happening here? Ready? That is a... No, I haven't finished, I haven't finished yet. Oh, oh. <laughs> That could be anything. Could well, be. That um, could be anything. I that scenario could be just about anything you like. Yeah, it could be, man. Well, no, it couldn't be anything you like. What could it be a chicken what? asleep, could it? What did you see? Do you have a picture? I saw a chicken being assaulted. Yes. Isn't that interesting, you see? Mm. In no, fact, not really, but, you know. Well, yeah, it can be interesting. <laughs> I saw an interesting photograph once about that. Did you? Yeah. Do you know that, uh, legend has it, and Time magazine in America reported this as fact, that yep. the longest a chicken has lived after its head has been severed and cut off by mm. the farmer mm. is 218 days. 
Yes. Yes? Yes. According to Time magazine, this was back in the 50s, the farmer kept the chicken alive once he realised that this was remarkable. Wasn't it bleeding out of its head? Only for a while, and then it and then settled it into... Uh, yeah. And he kept it alive by feeding it through what was left of its neck, but with an eyedropper. Oh. He fed and watered it down the gullet yeah. using an eyedropper, and the chicken continued for 218 days to have some sort of a life. And going uh, around the just sort of chilling, chicken coop. Like a normal chicken. Not pecking, obviously. Or is was it, it banging its noise? neck? Was it banging its neck on the It's floor? not reported. It's not reported. One would imagine that it, it, it got used to, to its mm -hmm. environment whilst mm -hmm. it had a head, mm -hmm. and therefore, mm -hmm. in, in a headless state, was able to... Well, we don't need heads. It's all a uh, myth. They'll be laughing at us in a hundred years. They will. When they say, look at them, they all walk around <laughs> with their heads on. They thought their heads were so important. If only they'd known. If only they'd known about yeah. Yeah. their little toe. Yeah. It's all down yeah. there. That's yeah, the seat that of our... Our consciousness. All the nerve endings meet there. We did, but no. Oh eight seven zero four twenty twenty twenty. To line three. Hi, line three. You're on the Human Zoo. Hi, Tom. Hey, yeah. How's it going? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know this Mike Dickens show gets mentioned quite a lot it on does, this show. Uh, uh, I, I listen to it regularly. I'm, I'm not sort of cussing the show down. I enjoy it. But oh, if you took everything that man se says seriously, you'd end it all yesterday, wouldn't you? He's a current affairs commentator, isn't Well, he? him and other people like him, yeah. I mean, He's entitled to have a full mosaic of views. Mm. And there's no one like him. There's no one like Mike. No. He's um, one-off. I was on a bus here about two weeks ago, and uh, a young lad got up at the back and sort of ran a couple of steps, whipped out his micro-scooter, whizzed down the centre of the aisle, turned, and it's one of these with, like, the ramp that goes down for wheelchairs, and he whizzed off the ramp and shot off. No one else was getting off the bus, no one else was getting on, there was no queue at the bus stop, he harmed no one. No one was in the way, but everybody did that, and that look, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. and they're the kind of people that must take Mike seriously, they, they, they must be believers. Well, I'll tell you, they're the sort of people who, when somebody gets on the bus, and they've got their Sony Walkman on, yeah. and you hear... Yeah. Which is, what, what's that compared to the roar of the bus, and the planes overhead, and the traffic and all the noise that you have in the world I today. just find I sit and try and work out what song they're listening to. I, I do, and you sometimes can, can't yeah, you? Yeah, you can. And if I do want to annoy them, what I'd usually do is I say, especially if they're sitting opposite you on the tube, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, or on a bus sitting opposite you. Yeah. You just say through, through clenched teeth, right, so they can't see your lips moving, you just say, I wonder if he's going to go deaf with that like that. <laughs> and you usually get two or three people go, <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll go, yeah, I wonder that. I was like, oh. Um, but the point is that what annoys people is A, that the person with the headphones on is usually young. Yeah. And B, they're enjoying themselves. Yeah. And the lad with the scooter, yeah. I mean, that's a great statement. And he's just having fun. He's he was. He was hurting no one. They don't like not it, do not. they? They don't. They no. do not like it. Which, of course, is all the more reason to do it again. Yeah. Am I right? That's right. Yeah. That's it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, them yeah. and asylum seekers, I Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> asylum seekers. Get them all going, Fantastic. don't they? Don't they? You need more. Yeah, more well, money. yeah. I mean, when I buy, <laughs> yes. I brought a bottle of brandy this weekend, and a lot of that went on tax, and if that went to helping someone that came from a war-torn country where they were in fear of their lives, then I'm glad it cost me £4 more than it would have done in France. You are an extremely wise man. Thank you, sir. So you me. will live forever. <laughs> if you do not know it yet, that I promise you. Thank you for that. You take care, Tom. Love and you, you and your family. Nice one. And well, same back at you with knobs, <laughs> brass bells, whatever. What a nice man. What a beautiful, beautiful, What a great hour this has been. man. Oh, fantastic. Let's, let's, let's get the tape and put it all on over again. No, yeah, let's no. Try play that whole hour again, backwards. Let's, let's take the news and sport on the Human Zoo on Talk Sport. I'm Tommy Boyd. Ash is here. Oh, what a goal! Just give it out! I've got some good sport for you. Why? Why? Where are you getting this from? Steady and jumping one at a time. Hold the barrel steady and jumping one at a time. Hold the barrel steady and jumping one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Oh. I have got nothing. Good evening, it's the Human Zoo on Talk Sport. On a Sunday night, myself and Ash, who is here. 
Oh, just kind of kick our shoes off, put our feet up on the furniture and just take the calls, come through without screening them, checking them. There's no phone operator, phone yeah. producer. Absolutely no processing whatsoever. No processing taking place. Mm. So people are exactly who they feel like being when they get to air. And what's interesting is that on a Sunday night, works on a Sunday night wouldn't work really too well anywhere else, I don't think. People just want to kind of express themselves. 30 seconds of angst. A lot of it quite well thought out, though. Has to be said. Then sometimes people just want to make a couple of points. But they tend not to be points that have been missed in the debate so far, just observations about what it's like to be them and the mystery of being a human being. Do you know what, like, you don't get any rock bands where the guy, the front guy plays the bassoon. No. Why, why not, then? This what is, is it? so true. Why? So true. Why? 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 It's the sort of unwritten hierarchy. You don't have a bassoon player in a of rock, rock band. music, no. That would be good. It would. Oh, it's 704-2020-20. And the harmonica has got such appeal, hasn't it? The lead singer can only ever, often yeah. only ever play a bit of harmonica. Why not a bassoon? Why not a bassoon? Well, I'm one, you're on the human zoo. Evening. Give the gentleman the best in the house. Yes, sir. I'll be back in a minute. On a mountain in Virginia, stand your lonesome pine. Just below is the cabin home of a little girl of mine. Her name is June, and very, very soon she'll belong to me. For I know she's waiting there for me, meet that lone pine tree. And here's a saloon rich mountain of Virginia, on the trail of the lone sound high. In the pale moonshine, her heart's entwined, where she carved her name, and I carved mine all oh, too. Thank you for that. It's so damn simple. The other thing that gets me is that of all the comedy that Laurel and Hardy did, that certainly is not the funniest. No. Um, there's bits of dialogue that they do that's a lot funnier. Um, but that was the one that got to number one one Christmas, didn't it? Yeah, it did, yeah. Because it's a song. Yeah. People wouldn't go out and buy three minutes of comedy. Mm. They feel they can only go out and buy three minutes if it's musical. Yeah. And I've often wondered why that should be. Because if you released the argument sketch from Monty Python or um, Who's on First Base by Abbott and Costello, yeah. um, then I would go out and buy that. Yeah. The second record I ever bought was by a band called The Baron Knights. I bet you've never heard you Oh, yeah. Them. Yeah, they were fine. Yeah. it was just a comedy. It was funny. It was good. It was funny. Yeah. But there ain't too many funny things in the charts, have ever been in the charts, that are just there because they're funny, genuinely funny. Some of them are funny, you laugh at them because they're rubbish. Yeah. Um, but you never get, you know, good bits of dialogue released as singles. And they could go out and buy them, and, uh, you know, which is a shame, if you ask me. Oh, wait, 704 It's a damn shame. Damn shame. Let's see who's on line two. Yeah, Tommy. Hello. All right, mate. Do you? Yeah, I heard that, um, Ash could do a really good pressing of the Bee Gees. That's what I heard, yeah? Where'd you hear that? Well, I've heard it through the grapevine, mate, you yeah. know. That's Marvin Gaye. Is it, yeah, I know, but is it true that Ash could do a good, really good impression of the Bee Gees? Is there anything in this? I'd like to hear it myself, personally. I'm asking it. Yeah. Is there anything yeah, in I mean, this, Ash? Go on, Ash. Go on, Ash. Go on, Ash. What would you like me to sing? Go on, Ash. You could do it, mate. 
ว่าว่าว่าว่าว่าที่มันใจในรอยที่ซื้อหลวงเกียรติที่มันกันฮะฮะฮะฮะเซนลาเซนลาพักกันขอบคุณ But yeah. I've not. I, I don't know how. Uh, you know, I've never been known to do that. No, it's just in the ether. The point was, you were you it's rose. Not my fault, Seto. I thought it was good. The point was, you know, you did it. You rose to the occasion. Well done. Line three, you're on the human zoo. John Hudson, just how sick are you? <laughs> Very. Can you quantify that for us? I'm well. <laughs> Thank you. All complaints about the previous sketch should be sent in writing to Anne Robertson, care of Ponson View. And line four. Hey, line four. Wasn't the same after Barry took. No. McPay Productions presents a breaking news story. Now we take you to Anna Potter at the Highbury Ground. Thank you, McPay. We're standing outside Highbury Football Ground where the West Stand has just burst into flames. Fire crews are there down the town. Police inquiry has started. However, they believe it could be arson. <laughs> uh, not bad, not bad. Well done, fella. Well done. He's good. Yeah, he's good. Line five, you're on the human zoo. Oh, sorry, send by wrong number. Yeah, good. He bottled it. Yeah, no, that's good. That's no, good. he bottled it. Well, that's, I don't mind writing either of a wrong, that's cool. And two, line six. Hi, Colin. Hey, who's this? Um, Gary. Hello, I called Gary. Last week. Sorry, I missed that bit. I called you last week. Well, nice to talk to you again. Yeah. Uh, you don't remember me, don't you? <laughs> not yet, no. There's not enough to, not a lot to go on there, fella, but don't be downhearted. Oh, right. I'd, um, I'll just, you know, talk to you about your theory of how we all created and so on and so forth and... Oh, that's not my theory. It's a fact. It, no, it's, 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 it's known to a great many people. I, I, I know I meet a lot of people who, who aren't familiar with the truth, but, but, um... But it's it's well it's wide widely known and has been for thousands of years. What is it anyway? This theory. Well, it isn't a theory. It's how it is, and gradually. It's a hypothesis. Uh, gradually, science is beginning to catch up with what has been known to a great many people, but not everybody by any means, for thousands of years. Which is that that. Then you'll come here. Just like to ask you a question. Oh right, I won't explain it again. No, we won't know what it is. No, we won't know what it is. No, no. Anyway, go on then, Gary. Ask us a question. Yeah, um, I'm just wondering. Um, I've got two questions. I'll make them try and make it quick though. Do you think, in um, like in the future and in the past, do you believe every like millisecond there's another one of you acting out what you're doing now, and do you think there's one in the future doing something and you're reenacting it? No, it's all more or less happening at the same time. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just something I keep on thinking. I think another millisecond before me, yeah. another millisecond before that, and before that, and before that, so and so forth, yeah? No, I understand. But I was ever born, you know, I just think there's another person just doing it, and I'm, like, reenacting it, it, and they're reenacting me. Yes, well, there's not a reenactment about it. It's not, um, it, it's not a duplication of you. Um, it is you, but it's elsewhere. Um... How can I best put it? Uh, and as far as as far as moving backwards and forwards through time, of course that is happening, because if if you go far enough forward into the future, such feats of travel are simple, and so it it is something that we are able to do as a species in the future. But therefore, because the, by its very nature, time travel travel, for want of a better way of putting it, enables Homo sapiens to travel back and be with us and see us now, then of course it is going on, and they reveal themselves to us in this in in different ways. But they do, they do, and, and they are doing it all the time now, and they're with us now. Yeah. They might. Well, I'm not saying they're in the room with you now, but um, they're in the vicinity. They put, look, look at it this way, Gary. Supposing you grow up and have children. Mhm. Mm They'll have children. They'll have children, they'll have children, they'll have children, they'll have children. A, a million years from now, there'll be people who want to meet their great, 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 grandfather, trace their roots. Everybody does. They'll come back and see who you are. Yeah. They won't say hi, but they might leave you with a better feeling than you had before they came back to pay their respects to you. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 That makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Second That's very question. logical. Yeah, go on. Um, 
it's I know you're a busy man on and off the air. True. And there's all these people saying that oh, you should read books and all that rubbish, yeah, and you know. Yeah. Sort of respect that. I wonder though, you've got, you've probably got a PC, I'm assuming you've got a PC. Yeah. Uh, do you play any games on it? No, I haven't got time. <laughs> what about Ash? I'm sure Ash doesn't either. No, I, uh, <laughs> Ash is too busy with his social life, my friend. Although sometimes I, my mate has a, uh, one of those PlayStation new ones, you know? Oh yeah, my boys have just got two. Yeah. No, I was just wondering, it's because most people on the radio that talk about football and these sports stations, and know you're a fan of football, Tommy, it's just that you usually, they all usually have a copy of Championship Manager. <laughs> Football manager. Yeah, they do. Yeah. You're right. I think my I think there's one loaded on my machine, but I've never yeah. got round to it. <laughs> a lot of football journalists sit at home oh, playing yeah. football manager, pretending they're oh, the manager. Yeah, yeah, manager. yeah. I know the sports editor yeah. of another big radio station. Yeah. Um, he gets in first thing in the morning and he immediately plays his test cricket game. Yeah, and for fantasy an hour. football. They love the fantasy football, don't they? Gary, thanks for your call. Was that it? Yeah. Well done, fella. Yeah. Cheers, Tommy. Cheers now. Bye. Cheers now. Bye. Yeah. Yes, it began with what scientists call the Big Bang. It wasn't a Big Bang at all. It's more like a... It was the separation... It was a fission. It was the separation the of the spirit that we call God from the matter which we now call the universe. God, or the living thing which is the spirit, which has been known to all civilizations on this planet and elsewhere, because it sowed its seeds across the universe at that time, and subsequently separated from the matter, which is what actually all of us hope we can do, you see. What? Separate from our matter. What? At the moment what, of and our... And go where? At the moment when our matter expires, yeah. it is our hope that we separate from, from it the matter. And, and, and go somewhere else. Well, in a, in, a, in a nutshell, that's what happened at the beginning of everything. That an enormous spirit separated from an enormous matter, form of matter, not size. And... Um, and so because we, in a sense, are recreations of that moment, it is our hope, and that hope should be fulfilled for most of us, that our spirit will separate from our decaying matter in the same way as what happened in what's called the Big Bang, uh. saw the separation of something which was tangible from something which was even more wonderful and mysterious, but intangible. Which um, people have called it. You called can that touch spirits. it. Spirits. People no, your essence. Yeah. The essence. And holy ghosts. But there are. But scientists are even now able to, to to discover that there are things in the universe, or there is something in the universe that you can't actually pick up on with photographs or yeah. with radar or you know. Well, how do they pick it up then? Well, they can tell that there's something else exerting some kind of an influence on the universe and everything that's in the universe. Well, it's your solar wind, isn't it? It's your solar wind. But that'll be. But they can't actually, you know, they can't get hold of it. They can't. Well, how do they know about it? Because it appears to influence. Um, it appears to influence, for example, the way in which galaxies move apart, the way in which galaxies um, swirl, the way in which planets move apart, the way in which uh, galaxies move apart and yet swirl at the same time. Um, they're able to. They believe they're able to calculate um, that the effects of their momentum and their gravity, gravitational pull against each other would produce one sort of a result, but when they make those projections, they find that they're getting a, a subtly different, but definitely um, something they can calibrate, but a subtly different set of results, which makes them think that there is something else acting on the matter that's in the universe, something else in the universe which is completely invisible and has no form, has no matter. Anyway. Oh, there is. Oh, yeah, there is. There is. There is. I mean, you know, yeah. A, yeah. Like uh, the holes in cheese. Are they holes or are they full? You know what I mean? Is the cheese the actual hole and the holes are full? Now, you see, t t now, you see Tao said something very interesting about that. Yeah. The most important part of the wheel is the hole. Exactly. At the centre. Oh, 8704 20, 20, 20. You the owner or director of a business. Are you in a commercial dispute with an individual or supplier? Maybe your dispute is with another company, a bank, or other professional organization. Well, if your dispute is worth £20,000 or more, and you think you're in the right, but are worried about the cost of legal action, then don't be. Speak to IIB Law now on 0870 444 
For one fixed low-cost fee, our specialist advisors will review your case and assess if it's likely to succeed. What's more, if we take on your case and don't win, you don't pay any lawyer's fees. We've helped businesses successfully resolve disputes quickly and effectively. So if you have a commercial dispute in excess of £20,000, call IIB Law now on 0870-444-2288. That's 0870-444-2288. Lines open 24 hours. Calls may be recorded. Insurance may be required. I could never stop worrying. I had so many loans, debts, monthly bills, payments for this, payments for that, but... Some of my friends never seemed to worry about money at all. They were all in debt to some extent, but how to let money worries get on top of them. I asked what I should do, and they told me about Dial for a Loan and how I could reduce my monthly outgoings by up to 70%. Thanks to Dial for a Loan, I've cleared all my debts with one low-cost loan. I even have enough money left over each month to enjoy life a bit more, and I don't worry. Dial for a Loan offer a free no-obligation service. So if you're a homeowner, call free on 0800 915 0011. That's 0800 915 0011. Loan secured on property and subject to status. Written quotations available on request. Bloomberg Radio, the definitive guide to the latest form on all the markets and all the money. Bloomberg Radio, the UK's with the latest financial news that moves markets. Bloomberg Radio, across the UK on national digital radio, 24 hours a day. Bloomberg Radio. <laughs> Tommy Boy You're tuned to the Human Zoo on Talk Sport. We take calls on a Sunday night without screening them and people have ended up giving kind of performances or at least expressing how they feel or asking the kind of things, talking about the kind of things that um, really are actually, you know, can't get more important, really, mm. and what it is to be a human being. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 0870402020 is the number. Thomas the Tank Engine is the music. And Line 6 is on. Hi, Line 6. I got a joint here, man. I just been for a special occasion. Tell Fargo, my super jazz, he quite like you. Is that a joint, man? Thank you for that. Thank you. Line I'm five. Phil, man. I uh, couldn't quite yeah, place. Up in smoke. Was it? Thank you. What's who's that? Chichen. Chichen. Ah. Line five. You're on the human zoo. It's that time of the week again. It's time for sing along a sky-fi. This week, it was to be Captain Scarlet, but his uh, uniform has run in the wash slightly, so he's uh, had to change his name slightly. Pray listen. Captain Fuchsia, he's the one who knows the Mr. Wrong Game and things they plan. Captain Fuchsia. To his mouth and throws a dangerous snake, a superman, crash him, and they know he will burn. And you know he'll return. That's the one. Yeah, keep up. Uh, no, I've missed it. Yeah, no, you've missed it. You did good, though, Sully. You did some work, and there was something there. I like it. As they say in football, good effort. Good effort. Do they say that down at the South, do they? Uh, no. Is that like a Birmingham thing? Very Birmingham thing. Is it? This is the voice of the Mr. Rons. We know you can hear us, Ruth, man. It was um, strange business. Do you remember the lights, the hoops lights that used to cover the earth? Come What's and that? Come, Captain Scarlet. Oh, no, I was, you know, I'm more of... Didn't work for me, Captain Scarlet. Anyway. I'm more of, yeah. Thank you for that, fella. 08704 2020 20. Line 4, you're live on the Human Zoom. Kind of felt boss, war jam, nitty gritty, you listen to the beat from the big bad city. This is Graham Presser. Cool. Thank you. Line 3, you're on the Human Zoom. Hi. Big bad city. This is Graham Presser. Cool. Thank you. 
Okay. One in three, you're only human to it. Hi, Dee. Hello, Dee. It's just... Hello, he's working. Nicely again tonight. <laughs> uh, you've got to listen down the phone. You can have the radio on, but you've got to be listening to the phone. Then you know you're on, like line two. Well, oh, nearly. The broadcaster and entertainer Clive Anderson has been shot dead by television host Noel Edmonds at his house in Cornwall this evening. Funny, Police attended the incident but were prevented from entering the grounds by machine gun fire. From Cornwall, Vivian Banch reports. The incident took place at around 7.30 during dinner when Mr. Edmonds produced an automatic weapon and began shooting indiscriminately at his guests. Just... One servant witnessed the bloodbath but managed to escape okay. intact. Uh, I came around the grounds, around the back way, and then got through the fence over here. Any idea why Edmund's done this? No idea. He's, he's never done it before. An hour later, Edmund's appeared at a top window with blood on his face and threw what may have been a head onto the ground below. Thank you for that. That was the last brass I after the one about, you know, the media coverage. Oh, was it? Is of it the Peter... did, you know, did you miss that? I'm, I'm Have you not watched Brass Eye? Oh, show... yeah, yeah, but I didn't, haven't seen that one. This show says Brass Eye rules. Yeah, man, it's funny with some of them. It's yeah. extremely funny. Yeah. Top show. Great director. Brilliant guy, Michael Cumming. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Gen genius. Possibly the biggest genius working in British sitcom. One of the great unsung heroes, because obviously Chris Morris gets all the uh, flack, uh, as well as all the uh, plaudits, but um, great show. Mm. Great show. Yeah, exactly. People don't realise it's taken the mickey out of television news. That's all. That's all. Brilliant. Oh, it's 704.22. It's funny, actually. That's the thing. It, it's actually funny. Because mm. there's not enough that's supposed to be funny that actually is funny. And when you watch Brass Eye, you laugh. Ha, 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 out loud. You know, yeah. that's what we want Big to do. Big belly laugh. We want to laugh out like loud. Brian Blessed. I don't want to sit there and go, hmm, that's quite funny. That's yeah. not entertaining yeah. me. Yeah. You know, that's like a, pe a peck on the cheek, yeah. whereas a full-blown laugh, <laughs> you know, that's like the big O yeah. of entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Not laughing like Tom Baker after a few pints. <laughs> How does he laugh after a few pints? <laughs> <laughs> Very exuberant. Have you yeah. been out for a few pints with no, Mr. No, but I've, I've heard about it. That he laughs big. That he's a very big laugher. I've told you this before, but did you ever see his life in the day of? No. Huh? In the Sunday Times colour supplement at the back, they do this thing called Life in the Day of, where um, all these people go, have to do a day in their life. So they go, uh, alarm goes off at 6.15 a.m. And usually I go downstairs and feed the cats and make myself a nice cup of coffee. But Tom Baker's went like this. He went, I awake on somebody else's sofa and wonder whose house this is and why I am here. If no one else in the house is stirring, I sneak up to the bathroom and check the cabinet to see if there's any Valium. <laughs> if there is, I pop a couple and rush out into the street and away. And it was all like that. I'd like to meet him. Do his laugh again. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastico. Line one, you're live on Talk Sports Human Zoo. Hello. What's happened, man? I'm having trouble with their audio. Shame. Never mind, try again. Line three it is now. Hi. Hey, Tom, hey. Hey. Yeah, can I just say, you've got the best show ever, Human Zoo, and you guys do a really good job and just keep it up, yeah? You're kind, man. I, li I listen every single week. Yeah? Thank you for that. I listen every single week, and you guys are just great. You're the best ever right. on the radio. Nice, right? of you, nice of you to say so. Cheers. All right, Tommy. Bye. Bye-bye. What a beautiful man. Beautiful man. Nice man. Line four, you're on the human zoo. Can't place it. Sounds good, mm -hmm. but can't place Cheech it. Chong, I think, again. Ah. Cheech and Chong thing going on. Thanks, four. Here's five. Oh, it's my friend. It's a privilege to speak to you. You've been inspirational for the time. Um, it's just Claire. I'd like you to wait for the one, basically, Claire. It's Guy that are turning up. He's one of uh, Tommy's gay fan club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tommy's a gay icon, you know that, don't you? My bongos. Beat my bongos. Coming, coming, coming. My name is the Flangemeister. Because I am a very uh, homosexual man. Well, I'm. You'll have my dick in 
Love to me, Okay, somebody done a little bit of audio, a bit indistinct, but apart from that, mm. you know, good work. Here's line six. Hey, line six, you're on the human zoo. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. I'm feeling glad I got sunshine in a bag. I'm useless, but not for long. My future is coming on, is coming on, is coming on, is coming on, is coming on. Finally, someone let me out of my cage. One hundred and eighty. Maybe you require one hundred and twenty-one. That was all right, actually. Can I uh, work more on the dark voice, the dark commentator? Voice? It came out nice. It finished yeah, well. You've got to yeah. finish well. That's a, a nice finish. That's the most important. If I, I give people in life two pieces of advice. One, finish well. Doesn't matter how you start, finish well. Yeah. And two, get more sleep. Leave them wanting. Get more sleep. Get more sleep and um, finish well. Give up the worth e work ethic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Line one, you're on the Human Zoo on Talk Sport. Hi. Hello, Tommy. Hey, up. Hello, are you just talking about uh, Chris Morris and Brasso? Did you ever hear Blue Jam, his radio programme? A uh, bits of, yeah. Not enough, though. Because what he does about is six hours of it, and what's the point that brings up? Uh, you've mentioned a few times recently about the F word, and a few times about censorship on the radio. Mm, yeah. Some of his stuff, it was, I mean, it was constant swearing all the way through, and some of it was even more disturbing than that, the infamous Brasso which came out. What actually are the rules about on, on the radio? Well, it's funny, there was an academy, um, a festival uh, held in Manchester about three weeks ago and um, I was asked to go up on stage along with a couple of other uh, good, uh, fine fellow broadcasters from other radio stations and, and talk about how far can you go. And the consensus was actually that nobody knows. It, it is not written in stone, you see. It can't be. You can't, you can't have bloody shall be used but not between the hours of um, 8 in the morning and 10 in the morning because children might be listening in the cars on the way to work, although... That's the sort of thing broadcasters have to consider. Yeah. Um, however, bloody can be used after 10 o'clock, Monday to Friday, unless schools are out, because therefore necessarily it's housewives and they don't mind bloody. Yeah. You can kind of think in those terms, but I think what you've ended up with in radio is an unwritten set of simply sort of sensible... Uh, not, not even guidelines. Parameters, just a, a parameter well, which people work within uh, that they can... Uh, well, well, what happens is, I'll tell you how it works, it works like this, somebody says something, somebody doesn't like it, that specific then gets tested and is considered right. either acceptable or unacceptable. And so you don't like know what the rules are until you discover that something is definitely not on. And then you yeah. complain and then... And then you get again. told you mustn't do yeah. that again. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's how it works. Down the line, someone tries it again. What you can't get is a handbook of what you can and cannot say or do. Because what was quite interesting is that, that Radio 1 didn't advertise Blue Jam. There was no... There was the first time when it was first... When it was first on, there was a little bit of advertising. But when it came on again the second time... I mean, it was in all the listings and everything, but there's never any trail for it. There's never any... Done for it. I mean, some of the stuff on there was... disturbing. I mean, I, I like Chris Morris a lot, and I like... And that's why I like him. But did you like that disturbing? It... It pushes... I mean, that's what I think that he actually tries and does. He actually sort of, he is pushing... He wants you to think. People, that's my view. Think, yeah. He wants you to think. He wants people to think. He doesn't want everybody listening to his show. That's important. Um, you don't want... In these days, there isn't so much broadcasting. There is broadcasting, but what there actually is, you see, is narrow casting. Yeah. And what, what you can't do is say to people, you are not supposed to be listening to this. This really is not your cup of tea. It's not that you're unwelcome, it's just that you wouldn't be amused, entertained, interested, stimulated by it. Actually, what we're saying is, you shouldn't be listening to this because you'll probably get cross. Yeah. But you don't want those people listening. You don't want to offend anybody. You just want to be able to do something which will mean something to a small section of the community. Then you've really got them. That's what's called, in my book, essential broadcasting. Something that people think, hey, this is aimed just at me and there might be another million and a half people in the country who will feel exactly that. This is aimed just at me. And they take entertainment from that, and damn it, they even take comfort f f 
from that because somebody has recognised them and the way they see the world. And in fact, that which is actually, I think, best suited to radio because it is such a personal experience. Because Agreed. it is. But that is what they do, isn't it, in radio? Yeah. Because like it, you could, there could be a swear word like at ten thirty at night said on one show, mm -hmm. and then and people complain and they say, well, no, that's all right. But then it could happen at ten thirty on another show, mm -hmm. and they would uphold that it depends because they'd say the audience listening to that wouldn't expect that. It depends. You see, I'm very tempted to use one of the words that at the moment are pretty much outlawed for broadcasters, but again. Um, I might fail the test of did I actually need to say it, even though it falls exactly into the conversation that we're having. We're going to talk about, for example, a word which we can't say. How can we talk about it without saying it? But again, because I think it would be slightly gratuitous if I were to say it on live radio for the first time, in my case anyway, I'm not going to. There is an element of gratuity about it. Um, but it's all down to the context. And if someone were to say the F word, and it were appropriate, then I yeah, wouldn't dump yeah. it. I would let it go out, provided it was this sort of time of night and provided, it, as I say, was, was, was the right word for somebody to say. If somebody were to be describing the birth of their child and they were to say that they were just effing ecstatic, that would be acceptable, I am sure, um, because it was such an expression of the way they felt. There are, there are two words, aren't there, where there's just two absolute... words never say one of them a derivative of that word yep. and the other one gynecological and that one I wouldn't I couldn't imagine never. a way of you because that one is almost exclusively used uh, it, as an insult yes. yeah it and it insults yeah. a lot of people in a lot of ways and that's just a bridge too far um, but the other word is often used merely as a substitute for very yeah yeah that's all yeah. it is it just means very 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 extreme Extremely. But it's the only word that can mean that. It's the word that means that to the most extent. So if and you're really trying to express that you feel ecstatic, it, it, it could be, under certain circumstances, that is the only word that will do for extremely or very, very. Um, but again, um, there's no guidelines, and again, you can't write that out and say this is how this word might be acceptable. You simply have to let it happen. If you judge it's appropriate, see what happens, and if you get told you got that wrong, then you don't do it like that again. And it's all quite a fluid situation, I guess. It was very interesting what you were saying with that old lady, was it last night, the other night, about he just came up with any word and said, you know, does that offend you? Mm. And it's still, I think people, people want to be offended at, at times, it is. Well, well, if you're an old lady on the bus and there are three lads up at the back and they keep using um, what's called bad language, then I think what really should offend you is the fact that they clearly want to offend you. Yeah. Because they generally are using that kind of language because they know that there's something slightly unlawful about it and that it is likely to upset some people. So that's upsetting that they should choose to want to do that. In, in a sense, it's the social equivalent of, of spitting or, um, or um, graffiti or, you know, those, those kind of misdemeanours. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, sorry, nice right. one. Yeah, good one, fella. Thanks okay. for that. Take care. Bye. Yeah, see, sometimes a human zoo can be... Um, the most intelligent show on the radio. Yeah. Fantastic. A great show tonight, Ash. Yeah. Quality. Yeah. Down to the full moon. Oh eight seven oh four twenty twenty twenty. That's the number if you want to try. Um, the email machine still got a bit of a glitch. Um, so um, uh, stack it or or try the phones. You're tuned to Talk Sport. It is the Human Zoo. I'm Tommy Boyd with Ash. If you had to put money on which went faster, ill-informed. <laughs> Thanks for those. That's the bit I remember. You didn't see the show. Uh, that's the bit from Brass Eye that I remember with uh, Chris Morris they're taking court and then it's four. Line four, you're on the Human Zoo on Talk Sport. Just reporting that they were totally ignorant and then four. Line four, you're on the Human Zoo on Talk Sport. Chris Morris is Very good. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Here's line three. Hi, line three. You're on. Hi, Tommy. Hey. Um, can I just... I've got some audio here. Okay. But first, can I say that this is the best zoo I've ever heard? It's, it is. It is. I think it is. Fantastic. The first time was pretty good. Yeah, the first time... Uh, Ash, do you agree? Yeah. It is the best. It's got the lot. Yeah. Okay, tell me if this isn't loud enough, okay? Okay. Come on, Mel, let's go. 
sort of a uh, yeah. development from. Do you remember? Oh, really? I the girl no, called I Melanie. The Bertles, uh, no, no, did the no, 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 no. Really? It, it, she was a girl. She was a one-hit wonder, but it was a huge number one. So uh, with the Wurzels? The Wurzels. They were number one, hits, with it? A couple of hits. Did they? It was Christmas. I wasn't guessing here. I would say it was Christmas 1973. And Melanie had the hit, and then a couple of months later, the Wurzels had a Christmas number one with it. Nah, sorry, mate. No, no. No, no. No, what? no, it wasn't 73 to Wurzels. No, was it not? No, it was more like 76, 77. No, no. Yeah. No. Nope. Sorry, mate. No, nope. no. Nope. So, in fact, it was later than that. It was 78. I can't remember how... 79 I can't remember the words to Melanie's song. But oh, it wasn't was a it, it wasn't song. Combine, was. No, she didn't sing about Harvard. Oh, she sang about... Um, I've got a something, 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 and I'll give you the key. Okay. I, I can't remember what the words. It was a strange mm. song, and you got them then. It was yeah. Charlie Wolf knows. I can tell by the urgency the of his body yeah. language. Go on, Charlie. I've got a brand new roller skate. That's it. Do it. But you don't need keys for a roller skate. Yes, you do. Sing it, do you Charlie. Well, I've got a brand, brand new, new ro pair of roller skates. Pair of roller I've got a brand new key. I, I think that we should, should get together and try them out, you see. Yeah. yeah. She also did one of the all-time great protest songs, Candles in the Wind, Lay Down, Lay Down. Lay Down, Lay Down. Lay down. Oh, we didn't get that over here. Oh, big pro. It was very, very 67 Woodstock. Fantastic artist, Melanie. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. Nice one. As our music correspondent, Charlie Wood. Uh, Combine Harvest is better. Yeah, it was better. Infinitely better. Yeah. Far better. But it didn't work well over there, I shouldn't think. Well, I know. Well, you they know. They were. Bloody Yanks are like... The Yanks have never yeah. had one of our yeah. comedy songs uh, in their yeah. charts. Oh, no, I... They might, didn't they release the Benny Hill one? Nah. Don't they like Benny Hill? Nah, they? they wouldn't have had, um, Milkman. Uh, what's his name? Ernie. Ernie. Mm. Let's go to line four and see if they're paying attention properly. Hello, line four, you're on the human zone. Smashing shot. Absolutely smashing. Okay, line five. Hi, good evening. Tommy. Hey. Tommy, you got a good show out there? Yeah. Yeah, but there's one thing that's spoiling you. Okay. I got rid of them. Oh, did you? Yeah. Because I think it, that was the pillock. <gasps> oh, right. So cool. the one thing you wanted to say, I got rid of it. Yay! Well played. <laughs> You're quick. I like it. <laughs> Too quick for me. So, let's go to line six. Hiya, Tom. Hey, who's this? Uh, it's uh, Scott from Birmingham. Oh, I was just wondering, Tom, if... Um, I don't know whether you've, whether you've got it with you or whatever, but uh, if you could play that... You know... Uh, people sending these clips to you by the um, no. website. Yes. Yeah. Have you got the one handy? You know the one about the the computer where he says you scroll the screen and click the mouse and, and uh, whatever else it says. I don't think I've got it with me tonight. No, but I will play it again. It's cracking, isn't it? It's brilliant. Yeah. Whoever wrote that, they yeah. have got a future. Uh, it's uh, uh, kept me and my family entertained for a long time. It's really good. I'll pass that on. It's a very talented young talk sport listener, a uh, uh, human zoo fan called Alex. I will pass that he's on. A star. I have really spoken to him on good. the phone about about himself, and um, yeah. he's, you're right, he's got a future, hasn't he? Yeah, well, I'm yeah. sure he has. If, the, yeah, if that's original, it really, really was good. Totally original. Yeah, yeah. nice one. I, I appreciate you saying this. No problem. Okay, Tom, take care. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Cheers. Nice, mate. Bye. Uh, let's try line one. Good evening, line one. You're on the human zoo. Do I need to keep saying that? It's a very echoey line, isn't it? It's a very echoey line, isn't that it? That sounds good, man. 
Yeah. Do I need to keep saying this is the human zoo? No. That's sort of a habit you get in in, the, in radio. You start keep no. saying who you are and what the show is and all yeah. that. No. It's, it's, it's fairly redundant. Let's stop broadcasting for a minute, Hello, line two. Hello. 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 Will you do your little trick for me now? Certainly. So, can you say smelly socks ten times fast? No. Please? We've been down this route. You're banned. I said only one call per evening. Did you not hear? Yeah, well, in future, okay? Okay, please. Because there's stacks of people getting through and they get cross if they can't get through when somebody manages to get through twice in one evening. So, it's not a rule, it's kind of, you know, it, it, it's just fair, isn't it? Yeah. You know, some people we'd allow through once in an evening. Would well, if it's voice. you, if you had yeah, you know to do I mean. it. Yeah, you know what I mean. We'll I'm just allow... Rule with an iron fist. One call One per caller per hour. hour. Mm. Hello, line three. Yes, hello. You're a big man. Let's do it. Let's do it a new way, shall we? You're a big man. You're a big man. But you're out of shape. But you're out of shape. Front rank, fire. Rear rank, advance. Oh, I do this for a living. Line five, you're on the human... Oh, there I go again. Hello, line five. Oh. <laughs> Hello, line five. Uh, quality. Yeah. Come on. Joe Nolan, see that? Yeah, yeah Joe Nolan. Why was he called 90? Um, well, it sounds better than just Joe, doesn't it? When I was a boy, there was a TV commercial uh, for a futuristic washing machine. And the voiceover used to go like this. In her street, they call her Mrs. 1970. In where? She, in her street, they call her Mrs. Oh. 1970. Because 1970 was considered the glamorous, glitzy future that all of us could aspire okay. to. Okay. And was she, like, had silver makeup on? Well, the uh, thing is, I remember, this is about 1965, and I yeah. remember thinking, oh, 1970. Yeah. Oh, the future. I wonder what it'll be like. Do you remember what they used to do they, when they showed the future? They'd like have round televisions. Yeah. And uh, pointy sideburns. Yeah. And people would wear silver clothes with pointy shoulder pads. The future's never anywhere near what they say it's going to be like. Well, one day it will be like that. But it won't. I no. know what it will be like, but it won't ever be like anybody's ever suggested it will be like. Yeah. The only thing that ever came near was... A bloke in 1908 wrote a book mm. about the biggest liner that had ever... Do you know this one? No. He wrote a book. He was an American. And he wrote a book. It was the only book that's ever known by him. And this was the book. And he wrote a book about a gigantic liner that was built. Um, and on its maiden voyage, it sank to the bottom of the ocean and everybody on it drowned. And it was supposed to be unsinkable. And he wrote that three years before the Titanic. And guess what the ship was called in the book? Titan. And that's just a little that bit. That is witchcraft. That's that is close, isn't it? it is the devil's that is word. close. That, I have to say, that is, you know, that's not bad, yeah, as no, stuff no. like that goes. Anyway. <laughs> this is line five. Is <laughs> show nine is still going strong. Hello, line six. Hello? Hello. Hello. Um, Tommy? Yeah. Do you know any words that rhyme with hanky? Or is that just a naughty word? 
I think it's um it's naughty enough not for us not to continue what the conversation. Is a total lack All things being being equal. Hello. <laughs> I think that was rude, Tommy. I, I couldn't understand a word of it. I think I might have been out of the brass side program. I have no idea. Lines are sometimes the best way to be oblivious. <laughs> I just had a thought then. Well, in about 50 years' time, there'll be two old geezers yeah. um, sat in one of those windbreaks that you get looking out over the sea at Eastbourne or maybe in Skegness, right? Yeah. And they'll start talking. They've never met each other before. Yeah. And you know the only thing they've got, they'll have got in common and they'll start talking about it, roomy-eyed, is the human zoo. Because yeah. anything that means a tiny little bit more to you than most stuff is something that you always remember, especially when you get old. Yeah. You know, lead soldiers and things it is for old people now. Memories to cherish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cherished life we had. We will cherish the... It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was lovely, Ash, I have. Uh, I, I, I could have listened to that all night. Well, I'll, do, I'll do your tape, man, and loop it for you. Oh, I'm serious. I, I, I could listen to that. Put some echo on. People would pay money. People would buy that. <coughs> Are you all right there, or is that? <coughs> I think you should think about changing to a milder brand, perhaps. Indeed. Anyhow, I love Mickey J's dad. Remind me to get him a birthday card. Good night, Tommy. Good night. Or possibly move to the country. Hello, line three. Hello. Hello. This is for um, Ash. Yeah. Um, it's for you to decide who's singing it. Ready? Yep. And don't look so shocked, you have to fear from my eyes. Uh -huh. My daddy is a priest, you know, and I am not a beast, you know. I think it's changed well. Want to look, I just want to look. Nah. I think it might be, that's my guess. Naked as nature intended. It could be his voice when he was a younger man. And I'll take off mine just to show you. Now he can't sing. Good faith. This guy can't sing. He can sing better than Wildcat. My daddy is a priest. He's got a good timbre. And I am not a beast, you know. I just want to look. Yes, I just want to. I hope the kid comes back and tells us who it is. Hello? Any ideas? No, we thought it might be James Whale. No. What? Who is it? It's Pat. It's Pat? Yeah. Pat. Pat? Yeah. Pat who? Is this song? Yes. Yeah. Pat. Who is it singing? Who do you think it is? We said James Whale. No, it's not James Whale. Well, who is it then? Hang on, I'm going to listen. 
No, we haven't got enough time to listen. We've got to do the news. Just tell us. We're never going to get it. I don't know. Jesus. Well, it will not hurt you. I promise you that. Who's Jesus? Any idea? Is it? Jesus. Just tell us who it is. Who is it? Yes. It's Peter Sarsted. Who? Oh. Peter Sarsted. And this. It's Who's human, that? Well, it, it's sufficiently human zoo because that therefore means nothing. But on the other hand, uh, not quite human zoo, because it's better if it somehow means almost something. Yet nothing. <sighs> oh, Peter Sarsted. Oh, eight seven oh four twenty 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 is the number. It's the... <laughs> what? It's just the voice. It's Peter Sarsted. I've never heard of him. No, it doesn't matter. It's the human zoo on TalkSport. The TalkSport Singles Connection is the easy, confidential way... 10.53 a.m. Tommy Boy on Talk Sport. He's planted rice in the paddy fields of Thailand. He's seen the sunrise from the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro, the ancient walls of Machu Picchu. He's got a Renault Turbo Sport and a TVR. He's got a huge bank balance. He could go out with any woman in the country. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a close personal friend of his house for drinks. He's the closest follower to the angel Gabriel. He is the light. Oh, Hosanna. He's Tommy Boy. Tommy <laughs> Boy. No more dirt in the theater. Attention, top sports security staff. The alarm has been activated in the celebrity toilet. Tommy Boy. Tonight has been the zoo of zoos. San Diego Zoo. Zoomongous. Why did you say San Diego Zoo? Well, because that's famous zoo, the isn't it? Uh, zoo of all zoos. It's a it? famous zoo, isn't it's it? It's a quality zoo, you know. Yeah. You've really yeah. got good pandas and all manner of species of animal. I was listening to another radio station which had a, a religious program on this evening and mm. um, they went down to their local zoo. <laughs> <laughs> really? And they find religious animals? Well, no, they got talking to the curator, who obviously was also a religious yeah. person. Yeah. Um, and so naturally, because it was a religious program, um, they, they, they were talking about the Christianity of zoos. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's what it is. the zoo. It was and sing hymns to the animals. And they were saying things like, you know, in many ways, the zoo is like the Christian church, you know, in that all manner of, you know, oh, God, see the monkeys swimming in the seas. <laughs> <laughs> it was cute. Oh eight seven. They were singing hymns. Oh eight seven oh four. And they were singing a hymn, and it was that hymn that. Did you know that that chant that goes your hmm and you know you are your hmm. Yeah. That's a hymn. Oh yeah. I don't know that. Yes. It's the human zoo on talk sport. Uh, the basis of it is that we just let calls come to air because on a Sunday night people are feeling in a particular frame of mind. Why don't people sing hymns on the bus together? Wouldn't society be a greater place it, if there was the conductor on the bus sort of mm. said, turn to page, yes, you know, and yes, everyone yes. on the bus... Oh, Lordy. A hymn. Oh, Lordy. If I ran a football club, yeah. instead of playing a piece of music when my team came out, yeah. I would orchestrate the whole crowd to sing a particularly stirring song, which we'd written specially for the club, like a school song. Yeah. And that would really, you know, lift Ooh. and bond Ooh. and... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. I mean, do you, I don't know whether there are other clubs do this. Because at Villa they used to do it, you know, when there's a se when the kickoff at the yeah. beginning, does all the crowd roar? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. And they go, go on, go on, and they kick off. Do you know what I mean? At the that high, was good. At, at the highest level, most yeah. coaches remind their, their their players when they're playing away that they're going to have to weather the first five to seven minutes yeah. of the game because the crowd are going to expect and hope that their team is going to score in the first five to seven minutes. Yeah. And so you get a lot of hurly-burly and up and under yeah. and frenetic, frenetic football. Yeah. Your best chance of scoring if you're on the wayside is when the crowd suddenly gets fed up <laughs> <laughs> after about seven to ten minutes they, mm, and they go quiet. And that's when you can take the game back. Anyway. Oh, Tommy, I was just yeah. going to say about Storming Norma. What? That's it. Okay, thank you. 
Line six, you're on the human zoom. Hello. James Turpin has a bald head haircut. Body form, body form for you. Hello, line one. Hi, Tommy. Hey, who's this? Funny. Uh, that was a cab driver. Funny. Hi, line two. Put your sweet lips a little closer to the phone. Let's pretend that we're together all alone. I'll tell the man to turn the jukebox way down low. And you can tell you're from there with you. You'll have to go. Whisper to me, tell me, do you love me true? Or is he holding you the way I do? Oh, I'm just blind. Make up your mind. I gotta know. Shall I hang up? Or will you tell Ash you'll have to go? I shouldn't say this because I'm plugging something else. Um, but there's some uh, athletics on tonight, and I'm watching one of the track events. It's a <laughs> long distance <laughs> women's event. Yeah. And, um, everybody's very, very conventionally dressed, except for the athlete in the green. Uh, oh, yeah. Who is wearing... It's a nice hat. The, the most bizarre... <laughs> it's, a, it's a butcher's hat. The highest bouquet oh, no, hat a, I've ever oh, yeah. seen in athletics. It's a bit like a beau geste hat at the back. Uh, yeah. But viewed from the front, it looks like a sou'wester. She looks like Captain Birdseye. I thought it was one of those butcher's trilby hats. <laughs> it's not going to catch on, is it? Uh, and it is definitely the funniest thing I've ever seen in athletics. And she's coming off the crown of the bend, and it looks as though yeah. she might get a place. She just she's Come on, co commentate, eh? Okay, well, uh, as they come round yeah. now, in uh, first place, it's uh, Anna Ford, just ahead of Valerie Singleton, and in third place, it's uh, the female captain. Oh, Her she's been kicked. She's tumbled there. She's oh, she's down! Oh, fallen over! Oh, yes, they've all fallen over! Fantastic! She's still there. She's still there. And dashed and four years Final of hard straight. training and getting up at four o'clock in the morning and eating sensibly have been completely bashed because of oh, all she stumbled yeah. and down they went. Yeah. And she got the kick at the end. Oh, she's going to get a bronze. She's going to get the bronze, yeah. And as they come up to the yeah. finishing line, it's a girl wins, followed by a girl, followed by the girl in the silly hat. It's a Fantastic. very poor time. And meanwhile, round the back of the back, straight carnage. Carnage. Isn't that the word for it? It was the 1500 metres. Carnage. There's pictures of athletes on the deck. Oh, I do feel sorry for them now. Oh, bugger. Oh well, maybe in four years. Mind you, they were all out of a medal contention, the ones who fell yeah. over. Well, no. They were? No, not yeah. the one with the hat on. She was third. Oh, well, she was the one I who... I bet she came third. But she, she could have won it. She could have won that. Spiked somebody. But, the... no. Yeah, no, she wouldn't have... No, she wouldn't out. have won it. No, no. No. But, but the point is, I suppose, if you if you get knocked over, yeah. at least here, here then they're now showing the stumble again, which is, oh, we'll, we'll crack on, we'll crack on. Hold on. How many go down in the end? One. Two. She dived. Three. She brings, ooh, she didn't half bring that one down with yeah. her spikes. Yeah. All right, 704 uh, It's the 100 metres in a, in a tick. I'll just tell you how that goes as it happens. Uh, line five. Yeah, he's going to come to line five. Hey, I line, why not? <laughs> cool. Hi, line six. Hi, Tommy. Hey, who's this? This is Daz from Tommy Boy chat room. Hi, Gaz. Can I ask? I have three questions. Firstly, can I sing a song for my mate McPie? Hang on. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. I'm bored already. Yeah. Sorry. Um, line it's, one. It's news. Tales, it's news. It's news. Oh, yeah. Such is politics to pay for business. Oh, yeah. What you mustn't do in politics is listen to people to pay for business. On Radio 4, such is politics. So that's the door that's open now. It's a mission, they're worried that it may not be able to kick that door shut again. It is the key that turns the door in the lock to open the door. I want to open doors, not shut them. On the hour with Principal Morris. Okay, thank you. Who's on line two? Hi, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, nineteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one.
It's Stitch Visual. It's Lauren Hardy, isn't it? I think it is. I think it's a... Stitch Visual. Visual. Come on, come, my man. What is your number? Hollywood 4368. <laughs> There's that bit in Zulu, isn't there, where the uh, colour sergeant is holding the roll call at the end of the battle, and he, go, he gets to Hughes. Come along, Hughes. I've seen you. You're alive. It's a great line, that. Hmm, that is a nice line. Do you like Zulu? Well, I, I've, I've missed it, you know. I've Have you never seen Zulu? I have seen it, yeah. God, you must be the only bloke who's never seen Zulu. Yeah, I, I think, I, I think you're right, time. you know, because... It's a lovely movie. I was actually away when they showed it. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> Made me laugh. Line three, you're on the human zoo. Hi. Ding dong, the witch is there, the witch is there, the witch is there. Ding dong, the wicked witch is there. Ah! Ah! And line four, who's this? Hey, Tommy. Hey, yeah. How you doing? Yeah, I've never been better. Who's this? Uh, oh, my name's Andy, but I, I want to make a complaint. Excellent. And the complaint was, or is, that I phoned up earlier and tried to play you some Derek and Clive, and you cut me off. Yes, I did. You can't be too careful with Derek and Clive. Uh, there are things, you know, there are, there are limits, and Derek and Clive usually, usually transcend them. Yes, but... Yes. This is a question of trust, right? Well, and, okay. And I, I've scoured the files, yeah. and I found one that I can play you. Okay. And now, however much, however much I don't want to uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of, uh, understood, understood. say in advance what happened. Yeah, yeah, it's acceptable. You know, and all I will say is, is Ash there? Yes. Right. Ash, keep your finger over the button, and if anything bad comes up, cut me off. All right. Well, I would say, Andy... Yeah. Well, I said, the way you set this piece up yeah. is a lot better than the way you did it the first time when you just f fired in with it. I like that on the human zoo. That works. But from time to time, it's also nice when people say, look, I'm going to play this thing and this is the reason and this is my thinking. Then it gives an extra dimension to it, which is just the humanity of the person who's at the other end. Are you with me? Yeah, I understand that. But you also have to understand that it kind of has less impact if I say it's not that bad. Okay, that's true. And, that's, and, I, and I accept that point. Okay, can I okay. play it? Sure. Okay. I'll tell you. Yeah. Testing. Testing. No, no, I don't taste any longer. Uh, I'll tell you the worst job I ever had. What was that? The worst job I ever had was with Jane Mansfield. You know, she's a fantastic bird, you know, big yeah. tits, huge bum and everything like that. But I had the terrible job of retrieving lobsters from her bum. Really? Bloody hell, that must have been a task. Well, it's quite a task, cos she had a big bum and they were oh, big lobsters. I remember she had a huge bum. Well, she had one and, uh, you know, presumably in the yeah. office life. Oh, shut up. She still has one. See, what's so bad about that? Nothing. Thank well, you. What do you mean? Don't, don't, don't make a fight of it. Oh, I wasn't making a fight. It was like you started it by cutting me off earlier. I didn't start anything. I've just got a job to do here. You're having okay. fun and I'm, I'm, I'm working for a living. All right, you didn't start anything, but you certainly stopped something. And I thought I was find myself in a Tommy Boydian censorship shocker. Well, I mean, that, look, first of all, don't take things personally. Nobody okay. knew who you were. It's like when a car overtakes you and yeah. cuts in front. We tend to think they're doing it to us. They're not. They're just doing it. They're doing it to a car. They don't know it's us. No, I take it really, you, I know you do, yeah. but you're, you know, you're, but you're unbalanced. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Man. Isn't it? Yeah. You know. Who's uh, unbalanced? I am, so, you know, in, uh, when I'm driving, you know, I'm very unbalanced, man. I don't get road rage, I get road outrageous, man. The problem... You're that bloke in the, uh, in the White Sierra in front of me, yeah? Yeah. The, the, the observation I would make, Andy, yeah. is because you've chosen a bit of Derek and Clive, yeah. which is more or less acceptable for broadcast, it is also, concomitantly, not particularly funny. True? Uh, well, funny because it, it is fit for broadcast. It's not particularly funny compared to the stuff that we can't broadcast. True? Uh, I could think of funnier things to play you. You're absolutely right. You see, that's my point. Either right. it's funny but unacceptable, or acceptable and not funny, but right. that's not to nitpick, because it's just as good as an awful lot of stuff that we've had this evening. 
and in fact that your conversation about it yeah. you know is 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 very much the the best bit of of the whole thing so thank you for that well you're welcome but i can you do me a favor possibly try next week after 12 o'clock, X hour, yep. find out what is acceptable and what is not, and I'll play you a really funny bit. Now, um, we've been talking about this earlier this evening. I'm sure you were listening. Um, yeah. You only find out what is unacceptable after you've broadcast it, and then you're in, you know, what's its name, Street, Shit Street. Well, see, there's a word. Now, I could play you something that says the S word. Yes. You know. Shit. And... No, yes. shit's probably yeah, it's not so bad, isn't it? It's ah, well, ah, well, it depends how you use it, you see. I mean, I used it there in a kind of a blokey context because after 12 o'clock, yeah. I thought it was the, the most, um, uh, it was, it was, a, it was a, just, it, you could do it. Um, and the fact that there was an element of frisson about it meant that it just kept the broadcast lively, sort right, of thing. Right, okay. Okay, can I ask you one more favour and I'll drop the issue? Possibly. Can I say shit on the radio? We. Uh, if it's in the right context and if it's if it's a discussion about the word and whether it's acceptable or not, then of course it isn't the right context and therefore yes. I mean, has shit become the new crap? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, has, um, has brown become the new black? You this can't, is you, I'll tell you what, you, you can't fault Ash. He never misses. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Bye. Tell you sure, I mean, crap. You're on very good form tonight. Crap would not have... Years ago, you know, oh, don't say that word. Now it's like, you know, politicians saying it on the. Yes, yes, you know, true, true. And that is what will happen. Uh, I, I just don't know. I, I just don't know. It, it, except all I do know, and we've said it a couple of times, we might as well say it again. You, it, when it comes to doing a show on the radio anyway, which is essentially live, that's the difference. Most TV, they've thought about it. Twenty-seven people have worked on it. They've had a discussion. They've had a meeting, they've probably circulated it to the heads of department, and that's what they're going to do, and so everybody's in it together. But if you're doing a live program, people are coming on the radio, making their comments, you know, bloody blah, blah, Ash and I are beavering away, and this applies to everybody uh, in this kind of radio, um, you only find out that you have overstepped the mark because somebody else decides you did afterwards. You don't know where the mark is exactly. Expect it to be more or less both interesting and entertaining and therefore colloquial, and sensible about what you do. And, and, you know, hour after hour, month after month, year after year, you get it pretty much right, I think. Mm. I think. But this show is just live philosophication. Yeah. You know, you, you've got to decide at that moment, yep. you know, is yep. this apt? Yeah, but I'm sorry that guy got a little bit offended because we didn't let the Derek and Clive thing go through. It's just that Derek and Clive generally is... wasn't meant to be broadcasted. It certainly wasn't. But by God, it's funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's something you're buying, you're pulling, you, you know, yeah, you, you're just you, listening with mates, maybe, and... You have six or seven beers, and then somebody says, let's listen to Derek yeah, and Clive, you and you're crying with laughter, even the, the 200th time you hear it. Oh, eight seven zero four twenty twenty twenty. It's the Human Zoo on Talk Sport. I'm Tommy Boyd. Ash is here. Wow, you look pleased with yourself. Yes, I've just given away everything I own. My house, my car, my shares. Are you mad? No, I've just made a will. It's the easiest thing I've ever done. Did you know that if you die without making a will, it could take a long time for your family to inherit your assets? Really? Uh, but didn't you have to get solicitors involved? Nope, I just used a CD-ROM called Click Your Will. Popped it into my PC, and in a matter of minutes, I was dragging and dropping my assets onto whoever I wanted to give them to. Wow, that all sounds very simple. <laughs> it is. Of course, the great thing about Click Your Will is that I can change my mind as often as I like at no extra cost, which only leaves me one problem. What's that? What to leave you? Maybe my 70s disco ties or elbow. Oh, Click Your Will. The will you write yourself. No solicitors, no paperwork, no hassle. It's dead simple. Click Your Will is fully Windows compatible and costs just $29.95 plus post and packing. Call 0870 07 81 451 for your copy now. Allow 10 days for delivery. 0870-07-81451. Imagine the perfect Marillo cherry tree. Its branches heavy with ripe crimson fruit. Each precious cherry swollen with rich red nectar. 
Imagine a basket of freshly picked sun-ripened cranberries, each one bursting with crisp, refreshing juice. Now, imagine both these delicious juices blended together for the first time ever in a new super-premium fruit drink. Imagine their luscious, fruity juices mingling in your mouth, layer upon layer of sophisticated flavors. The rich aftertaste of cranberry and morello cherry fingers deliciously in your mouth. Sunraysia's new cranberry and morello cherry juice drink is the new adult taste sensation from Australia. Look out for the glass bottles in the fruit juice aisle at Booth Supermarket. Mmm, Sunraysia, first class in fruit juice. Monday Night Racing on Talk Sport. Tonight from 7, Derek Thompson and Alex Hammond bring you all the form from under the floodlights at Windsor. And Charlie McCann brings you all the action from Carlisle in Talk Sport's essential night racing show. Tonight from 7 on Talk Sport. Please keep listening. Tommy's just bought a set of matching micro scooters for the new seekers, and he needs the money. Desperately, now. When people come in here and find you, you tell them. Tommy Boy did it. We used to have fish, goldfish, right? And I was in the pet shop, I don't know why, and they said, um, live goldfish food. So I bought a plastic bag of what looked like cloudy water with in it lots of microscopic things. Uh, and I took them home and got home. And on examination, they were little animals. They weren't sea monkeys, were they? They were like little shrimps. They're sea monkeys. Living animals, right? And what you do is you then drop them in the water and watch them run like crazy from these giant <laughs> shrimp-eating goldfish. It was hideous. I never did it again. Did they dance to music when you played music? They did not. They ran like crazy. They went in the water and they went, Ah! <laughs> It was like people, I mean, people who have snakes, they feed them sometimes, so you're told, you know, live mice and things. And yeah, rabbit, they do, they do, Rabbit yeah. cutlets. And I just couldn't stand any of that. I wouldn't nah. be interested in any of that. Do you remember sea monkeys? Yes, I do. The little thing, that you, and, you got, and the advert would say, they would show yes. pictures of these monkeys and go, It'll da they'll dance to music. Yeah. Not, and, you know, how, how much were they breaking the trade descriptions at? What, how you got the things and they were like just little, uh... The living creatures, though. I mean, how much are they breaking all sorts of animal rights? They didn't dance things? to music. Yes. When when chefs do fish recipes, they often say, buy a fresh lobster, a live one, um, only live will do, mm. and bring it home. Mm. And then part of the recipe is killing the lobster. Mm. And there's various ways. Mm. Sometimes you take a meat cleaver down the back and slice it in two, <laughs> lengthways, <laughs> yes. Other times you get a skewer and do something unspeakable with the skewer, and other times you just stick it in a pot of boiling water. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting, if you if the same thing applied to sheep, supposing the recipe called for a rack of lamb, and so you you could go to the butchers and come home with a sheep, kicking and struggling. Can you imagine Delia Smith? Nah, nah, <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> Delia Smith saying, then... Uh, Rap the sheep. <laughs> Five <laughs> years. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Bludgeon its brains out with a mallet. Don't forget to stop. <laughs> and cut its head off. Cut its head off. And let it boil for four hours until the skin is loose. Then people would go mad. There would be criminal action. People would end up in prison for seven years for doing that to a sheep. Mm. Live. On telly, in yeah, their no, kitchen. I, I saw a, lo a lobster incident once, a television it? lobster incident. Go on. I was actually, I went to um, TFI Friday, oh, yeah. and they, some reason, they had a lobster on, a live lobster. And uh, afterwards, like, the filming had finished, but I saw them releasing the lobster into the Thames. You're joking. I did. What, for a hoot? Well, I don't know, I think so, yeah. Just no, it's better than cutting it in half. Should we reflect on that a minute? Yeah, well, Let's think reflect. about a lobster in the Thames. Lobster. We're back to lobsters. Isn't that funny, you see, from Derek and Clive? There. Isn't that odd? Isn't that interesting? Why? Well, because the f last but three callers was going on about um, Derek and Clive collecting lobsters from Jane Mansfield. Oh, yeah. 
See, it's funny, isn't that it? That is strange, yeah. Oh, wait, 704, 20, 20, 20. Let's go to line six. Hello, line six. Good evening. Here is the news on Friday the 27th of Geldof. Archaeologists from Mount Sinai have discovered what is believed to be a missing page from the Bible. The page is presently being carbon dated in bonds. If genuine, it belongs at the beginning of the Bible and is believed to read, To my darling Candy, all characters portrayed within this book are... It's purely coincidental. Very good. Line one, you're on. Hello. Hey, Tommy. Hey, who's this? All right. You know about, uh, it was about 10 o'clock, you said you were going to tell that joke? Yes. Well, they go, Ugh. Yes. Yeah, can you tell it? I don't know. What? I'm just thinking it through, hold on. They go, Ugh. Can you tell it? I don't know. No, because I, I don't think I can, I'll just check it with Ash. Go on. Can, switch me off, Ash, for a second. Mm -hmm, go on. Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. You gonna? Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. Sorry. Oh, I don't know, it's a bit of a... I'll put your mic back on there. Okay, I'm back on there. I'll just check it with Ash. I'm not sure whether really I can because it's the actual act that's involved. And I don't know. Go on, Tommy. Go okay. On, do it for the public. All right, then I will. I'll take a risk, okay? Mm, Fine. Go on, go on. So, okay, so a travelling salesman, his car breaks down in the middle of the night and he knocks on a farmhouse door. And the farmer answers the door and he says, is there any chance that he could um, he could sleep the night? And the farmer says, yes, he says, but there's only one bed you'll have to share with my daughter, uh, but uh, don't you dare lay a finger on her, otherwise I'll blow your brains out. So he says, Fine. And the daughter comes down, and she is a, a beautiful woman of 21, yeah. buxom and blonde, and, mm -hmm. um, and, and obviously wise to the ways of the world. However, the travelling salesman is, of course, in awe of the warning he's received from the farmer. So he puts on his pyjamas and gets into bed, and so does the farmer's daughter get into bed next to him. And they're lying there in the absolute silence when the um, farmer's daughter says to him, <clears throat> I do feel nervous saying this, you see, slightly on the radio, just in case there's anybody 12 who's listening. He says, would you like a job? Did you hear that? Yeah, oh, go on. Fine, okay. And he says, oh, no, 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 no. He said, how about a tongue job? He said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> she says, oh, come on. How about, how about a hand and a tongue job? And the man goes, oh, all right then. So she leans over and goes, Oh. Oh. Oh, it was all right in the end. It was all right in the end. Yeah, it wasn't right. bad, was it? And I think at half past one in the morning, better, and since it's the X hour... Oh, and, uh, yeah. I was expecting it better, I thought. What? I was expecting it to be a bit better. You were expecting it to be a bit more dangerous. Yeah, yeah. You were expecting it to be a bit more dodgy. Yeah, I was, actually. Yeah, well, there is a dodgier version. I cleaned it up. Yeah. Oh, oh, right, then. Yeah. You can tell the dodgy version, could you? No, I've done it. I leave oh, it. You, you, oh. you, I, I know that uh, there should be nothing wrong with it, but I, you know, I'm ca I'm I'm cautious. I'm a sensible broadcaster, for God's sake. Yeah. 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 All yeah. right, Tom. Cheers, mate. Latest, bro. Yeah. What was that last bit? Latest, bro. What does that mean? It means I will see you later, brother. Oh, latest, bro. I'm sorry. I'm out of a loop here, There's so much, which is yeah, great. No, 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 we're not in the swinging 70s Seven anymore. Seven Ballesteros, the bullfighter, that's what I call him. Uh, technically, he's a professional golfer. And the mine said recently, uh, what do you get if you cross a ballerina and a bastard? Ballesteros was his answer. I guess, if you analyse it, that Seve combines the qualities of both those animals. He has the live sophistication and nimbleness of a ballerina. Combined with the hard-nosed, ruthless thuggery of a bastard. <laughs> uh, Line three, you're on. Hi. It was a time of crisis. It was a time of redemption. Coming to a cinema near you this summer. A tale of two sides in a struggle for supremacy. Starring Mel Gibson, Isle Laurie, Kenny Ramsey, and a herd of Afghanistan lovers. The best appearances from Timmy Mallet and open winner David Duvall. From the director of I Spit on Your Grave, Billy Croft. I know what you Tommy did last summer with a pair of Velcro gloves. Grade 18. Yeah, pretty good. Nice one, fella. Thank you. 
Here's line four. Hello. Hello, who's this? Oh, it's Colin. Hello, Colin. Yeah, who's this? My girlfriend. Nice one, guys. Nice one. Thank you for that. And to line five. Oh, it's Tommy this and Tommy that and Tommy go away. But it's thank you, Mr. Boyd, when talk sport begins to play. It's Tommy this and Tommy that and chuck him out, the brute. But it's saviour of talk radio when his mouth begins to shoot. Good night, Tommy. Good night, Ash. And line six. Hi, line six. Hello, Tommy. Hey. Hi. Fella. It's Bob from Stanley Bridge. Oh. I've not spoken to you for about six months. We've missed I've been you. working long shifts, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. But whilst I've been away, I've not been wasting my time. And I've been looking into things, you know, like adages and sayings, like things like, uh, still runs the water where yeah. the brook is deep, things like that. Mm. Stitching time. Mm. I've been looking into the, uh, the honesty of all that. Mm. And, I did happen to hear, whilst I was looking into this, um, a quick moment of your program, oh, a few months back, where you were talking about um, Samurai Warriors and something about a book you'd read, um, I think it was The Way of the Warrior or something like that. Mm. Yeah. So I thought, right, so they think they're hard and all this. So I went down to our local Samurai Centre in Staley Bridge and I found one in there, I went in there and I thought, right. He had that, sword, everything. I thought, I right, think you're hard, do you? Now, I'm an office worker, so I don't have much to really hit him with. I'm not a big lad. So I thought, right. So I took my fountain pen out and I jabbed it right in his thigh. Right? Mm. Now, I'm speaking to you from the Thameside Accident and Emergency Department, and I can now tell you that there is no truth whatsoever mm. in that phrase, the pen is mightier than the sword. Oh, quite right. Well, yes. Yeah. Now, not but only But you that, tested it. Sorry? I, I, just, I, I did well, at least I, test it out. The you theory, tested I it. I tested it out. So you're on solid ground here. Correct. Not only that, my ex-wife and me uh, can now also verify to you that there is also no truth in that saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder. True enough. So where does he get these sayings from? Good Lord, God, no, God only knows, but, uh, but thank you for doing your work. Well, I, I didn't want you to think that I hadn't been paying attention and what have you or thinking about you even whilst I've been working away. Drifted off to another radio station. Bob in Starley Bridge is back. I don't know what all the margaritas we buy, we can afford each other, honey. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll go you one further. <laughs> and this is the one, folks, this is the idea that has made me virtually an anonymous figure in America for the last 16 years. <laughs> I have watched my crowds dwindle. I am going nowhere and nowhere quick. If you have children here tonight, and I assume some of you do, I am sorry to tell you this. They are not special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, 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 hold on. Let's don't have any... Wait, 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 don't, don't misunderstand me. I know a lot of y'all... What? What I no, wait, wait. Let's be clear on this. I know you think they're special. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware of that. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that every time a guy comes, he comes 200 million sperm? Did you know that? 200 million sperm. And you mean to tell me you think your child is special? Because one out of 200 million sperm, that load. We're talking one load. <laughs> Connected. Gee, what are the fucking odds? Okay. Yeah, that had a lot going for it. Very good. Did you catch any of that, Ash? You were busy trying to remember the email machine yeah, again there. Yeah. yeah, it was good. It was good. I don't know who it was. Thank you for that, line one. Here's line two.
Is it psycho music? It's like psycho, isn't it? Yeah, but maybe it's the like incidental music. I don't know. It certainly involves... Oh, uh, yeah, that's Hitchcock. It involves peril, doesn't it? You can tell it's got peril. Peril, then. Peril. Thanks for that. <coughs> Is the psycho music, isn't it, in the shower? <coughs> Line three, hi. Hello, Tommy. Hey. Hello. Um, what football team do you support? Portsmouth. Um, well... I rung about a month ago, mm -hmm. and I said, what do you think the chances are West Brom going up? Mm. And you said, they're going down. I think they might. Why do you think that, though? Well, because because they're not all that good. But they got to the playoffs, didn't they, last year? That's true. I was only trying to wind you up a little bit, you know, just yeah. for the for the crack of it, like, like football fans do, mm. you I'm know. I'm sorry about the goalkeeper yesterday. Yeah, thanks, mate. Okay. Yeah. And what team does Ash support? Villa, mate. Mm. Just yeah. down the road, you know what I mean? Down the road from your end. Yeah. Closest ground, isn't it, I think? It is, yeah, closest ground to West Brom. Have a pop at Ash. Go on, tell them Villa are going down. Villa are going down. They are going down, actually. Ash played that because he thinks it's clever to play comedy um, laughing there, you see, fella. Uh, Never mind, thanks for your call. Okay, then. Off you go. Bye. Oh, oh. What was that? Oh. He's just flatlined. He's flatlined. Oh, He's oh, gone. Oh, Ash is cool. leaving us. Ooh. Quick, everybody, get out those two oh. things that you stick on oh, your chest. Again. Ah. You put those things on your chest. And then you say, stand away! Are you saying like Darth Vader? Like I know. Yeah, I know. And... Oh, stand away. One more time. Stand away. Uh, How do you do that? It's a digital feedback, that is. is it? Yeah. See, I'll raise Does that make a sound? It makes a sound as though we're, we're speaking to you from another planet. Yeah, man. Yeah. And they're about to start the 100 meters. Shall I commentate on the... Uh, Christian Malcolm and uh, Dwayne Chambers, and they're away a second time. Christian Malcolm quite quickly away in lane two, but at the moment it looks very much as though Morris Green, Morris Green is all the way to the line, and Morris Green just touches off Atul Bolden with possibly a medal, I don't know, possibly fourth place. But now after the race, uh, he's limping very badly. That's uh, not a very interesting race at all. Give me me back. That was good, that. Uh, no, uh, when you see the 100 metres uh, later, tomorrow or something, um... Oh, he's Morris Green himself. wins, but he has to run the last 10 metres on one leg. But he still wins. That's amazing. I didn't see that. I've never seen that before. And Dwayne Chambers, I think, just run out of a medal. Because uh, in lane eight, it's very hard. He was in lane eight. Very hard to get a medal in lane eight. So he sort of triple jumped the last 10 metres. Well, watch it again if you do have a chance. Uh, his, his, his calf muscle goes, right. snaps, with about... Ooh, five to eight meters to the line and they all close in on him as he hobbles it's it's fantastic to see maybe he did it on purpose for the sponsorship for the anecdote but here comes the, the race again sorry about this if you can't get to a television this might be slight but that, what i'm doing is saying it's something to look look out for if you do get to see a recording of the race on the news mm -hmm. at some point he is the widest man there isn't it tomorrow He's wide. He's stockiest man. He's right in the middle. Now you can see here he is with about 10 metres ago. You'll suddenly see him start to go, oh, oh, my leg. Oh, oh, there, see? Oh, bloody hell. Ow. Oh, ah, e. And Bolden almost gets to him, yeah. but not quite. And Chambers, I think, actually, sixth. Yeah, it, the reason it's in a V shape when they're running is because they... The fastest guy goes in the middle, don't oh, yeah. they? And then the slow, it goes out like The that. fastest guys from the heats go in the middle. And in, that's in why four it's sort of five. a V-shape when they finish. That's right. And they do the same with swimming, I believe. Where it makes more sense in swimming because uh, they do get the wash of the guys ahead of them. Yeah. And now they're showing a close-up of it, so you will get a chance to see. His leg definitely gives up. Mm. And, you know, that's wanting it. Oh, there he goes. You yeah, see, yeah. about three four strides yeah. before the end, when he just puts in an extra mm. spurt, he goes, and you can see him go, ow! So he's got the wrong spikes on there, that's his problem. I could be. Too long. 
I'm sure the tourniquet down around his leg doesn't help. Anyway. Murphy, on with the show. This is Murphy, Robert Burke Hugh is in trouble over his new song, Uzi Lover. During the stage version of the song in the live show, he kills five people on the stage during the stage show live as it's performed. Oh, steady. It's very rude. To line two. Hello, line two. You're on the human zoo. <laughs> That's okay. And line three. Hi. Uh, Comedy songs like this in the sort of 50s, 60s. Who, who did? People. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. Is, is it Tommy Steele, is it? I don't know. It said Fred. With his crowbar, gave a mighty blow. Was he in trouble? Half a ton of rubble. On the top of his dome. It's like that sticking in his Charlie and me and have a cup of tea and then we went on. Oh, he had to trouble with. He's too hasty. Now, you never get nowhere, you never get nowhere if you're too hasty. Oh. Thank you for that, fella. We've got some data from Robin. Data's got, Robin's got some data. It's Bernard Cribbins. Is it Bernard Cribbins? Yeah, I met him last week. Did you really? Yeah, the, um, 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 the, He's a grand fisherman, are you? He's a grand... F I think he's a grandfather. He's a grand he's fish. A derby, I think. He's a grand fish. Fisherman. Fisherman. <laughs> are you going to do it, Tommy? Father of two generations of halibut. Indeed. Yeah. Now, the other one that Bernard Cribbins had out around about the same time was, um, A Hole in the Road. That's right. Here Remember I was, that? digging that hole. There was I, digging, digging a hole, hole in the ground, so big and sort of round it was, and there was him. Standing up there, all big and official, with his nose in the air, and so on, so on, so on. Yeah. Bernard Cribbins. Bernard Cribbins. Do you remember him in the railway children? What was he in the railway children? He was, um, I think he was one of the railway staff in the railway children, and Jenny Agatha. Jenny Agatha. Yeah. Jenny Agatha. Why aren't there any girls called Titty anymore? There are, in other countries. Oh. Mmm. 2020. Line three on the human zoo. Hi. Hello. Hello. Is Nick, you remember me? No, not yet. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, I, I made a brilliant call last week. But you don't remember me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very good, very good. Cause people are like that. Hello, Tommy. Remember me? I phoned about four years ago. Yeah. I was talking about my legs. Yeah. I've got a fed life. <laughs> And you are the only one. <laughs> All right. Now, I'll remember you next time if you tell me you're the bloke who wet. Will you? Now, will you send your obscene emails and racist emails and make stupid calls just to have an impact? <laughs> they call it often say Jesus wet, and that's supposed to be a very bad swear word, isn't it? Yeah. Don't tell. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I'd why, why exactly? I know. 
I've got a bit of audio I'd like to play. I'd like to hear that. It's, uh, it's from the human zoo uh, about eight, nine months ago. Do you remember when we used to have jugglers? Oh, yeah. And it's just one of the highlights to take us back to the glory days. Uno, dos, tres. Later. <laughs> That was a great moment, wasn't it? Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We should get the jugglers back. Yeah, I haven't seen. Do you, they don't. Do you, oh yeah, yeah, no, they're there. They're there. They're they're there. Down there are they? they're, yeah, we found these jugglers. They were juggling. Um, there's a massive, massive um, uh, crossroads about half a mile from Talk Sport, uh, about eight roads converge. It's more than a crossroads, about eight roads. Big dual carriageways all converge. Very complex set of traffic lights yeah. uh, at it. Is it Vauxhall Bridge? No, it's Backfriars. Backfriars. Backfriars Bridge, yeah. And there's these two Peruvian guys, and they make a living juggling. <laughs> it was three. Remember, there was three, three ones. Three, three, three. There's two or three. Their three, mate comes over sometimes. Three jugglers from Peru, and they make a living juggling Right, and they have to juggle in front of the stationary cars and then get the hell out of the way. They run out, they yeah. run out in the red light. They run right out in front of your car. Red light, they run out and... <laughs> and they're good, aren't they? Big yeah, clubs they're, they're throwing. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just get like 30 seconds to do a quick collection and somebody will give them 10 pence or something and then mm. get out of the road, otherwise they're dog meat. Yeah. And so we thought, oh, they're perfect for the show. It was the best job they ever had, wasn't it? Then they were going off to Amsterdam. That's what they said. It was the best job they ever had juggling on the radio. It was great trying to explain to some Peruvians that we wanted them to juggle on the radio. Yeah, it was good. They were nice guys, They, they were nice guys. Very nice. Chilled out. They didn't understand it at all, but when we said we were going to pay them, they went, OK. Yeah, and they, they wanted more money in the end, didn't they? They, they had bartered yeah, for more money. They were Two minutes worth, they were getting like 50 quid, weren't they? We had them for three weeks, and then they went off to Amsterdam. On the they hit the big Amsterdam. time, didn't they, after this show, you see? I wonder why Amsterdam and why not... Norwich. Norwich. <laughs> Chesant. Chesant. <laughs> Line five. You're on the Human Zoo. Hi. G'day, sport. It's Alf Stewart here. Phone in live from the set of home and away. How's it going, Tommy? Fair income to you. Great show tonight. It's been a good zoo. You're absolutely right, Cobber. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever listened to it, but, uh... You watch home and away at all? Not if I can help it, no. Yeah, it's definitely better than Neighbours these days, mate. Strike me pink. We've got some great storylines now. So, make it worth your while. Tune in next week, mate. Okay, Great Papa. stuff. Thank you. Yeah, no, will do. Oh, wait, 704-2020-20. Remember, Charlie Wolf will be here, and it looks as though he's lining up... <laughs> another great line six. Another great show for you from... one o'clock. <laughs> Good morning, Tommy. Just when you thought that you'd never hear somebody play the good zoo again. Uh oh, got to clangor again. I hope this audio is at the right level. I'm just going to shut up now and let it do it. Okay. What exactly are your demands? We're giving Pilot two days to dismantle the entire apparatus of the Roman Imperialist fleet, and if he doesn't agree immediately, we execute him. Hey, let us what the fuck? Please take everything we have, and not just for us, for our fathers, and for our fathers. And for our fathers. And from our father's 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 father. Yeah. And from our father's 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 father. Oh, don't say the point. And what are they ever given up in return? The aqueduct? What? The aqueduct? Oh, yeah, you know, they didn't give us that. Uh, that's true. Yeah. And the sanitation. Oh, yeah, the sanitation, mate. Remember what the city used to be like? Yeah, all right, I'll grant you the aqueduct and sanitation are two things the road under. And the road? Well, yeah, obviously not roads. I mean, the road's going
Okay. Nice Thank morning. you and good night. Bye bye. Are you the owner or director of a business? Are you in a commercial dispute with an individual or supplier? Maybe your dispute is with another company, a bank, or other professional organization. Well, if your dispute is worth £20,000 or more, and you think you're in the right, but are worried about the cost of legal action, then don't be. Speak to IIB Law now on 0870-444-2288. For one fixed, low-cost fee, our specialist advisors will review your case and assess if it's likely to succeed. What's more, if we take on your case and don't win, you don't pay any lawyer's fees. We've helped businesses successfully resolve disputes quickly and effectively. So if you have a commercial dispute in excess of £20,000, call IIB Law now on 0870-444-2288. That's 0870-444-2288. Lines open 24 hours. Calls may be recorded. Insurance may be required. If you're driving a long way today, have any of the following cropped up in conversation? Are we nearly there yet? Why do I always have to go in the back? You're a waste of skin. Let me drive. If the answer to any of these is yes, we strongly advise you to pull off the motorway at the earliest opportunity, have a bite to eat, and a refreshing beverage. Moto. Essential maintenance for motorists. This Sunday afternoon from 1, the champions of the Premier League. Oh, what a goal by Manchester United! And the winners of the FA Cup. Here's Liverpool, into the penalty area, it's in! Face each other in an explosive charity shield clash. Oh, what a goal! Manchester United versus Liverpool. Unbelievable stuff! Full, uninterrupted commentary from Alan Parry and Alvin Martin, direct from the Millennium Stadium, Cardiff. This Sunday afternoon from 1, on Talks. Tommy Boy, Human Zoo. What if the world is just a big disappointment? Ask not what your radio station can do for you. Ask what you can do for your radio station. Very much how this show is. What can you do for your radio station? So I'm taking a week's break. Um, I believe Chris Ashley is going to be looking mm -hmm. after the mm -hmm. zoo. Yeah, it's not bad for a boy. It's fantastic. And so I'll see you in a fortnight's time, Ash. I won't send you a postcard, I don't do that. Yeah, I'll send you one. But I'll be thinking of Yeah, send me a postcard on holiday. That yeah. that'll be That's how it should be done. Sufficiently different, yeah. <laughs> Let's take line six. Who's this? Okay. Oh, here we go. She's arriving, and yes, she has the dog. Just wait. What is my problem? Long hair, mutant mud. She knows he's there. Under my chair. Okay. She took him up No idea at all, but thank you very much indeed, fella, for that. I think that just about brings the, uh, the greatest human zoo to date to its, uh, to a conclusion. So if you're dialing, keep your powder dry. Remember, it's Chris Ashley, probably, we think, with the human zoo next week. And Ash, you're here? Yeah, I'll be oh, here, man, with mm. Aloysius. Excellent, and I will, um, I'll look forward to you in a fortnight. It was a zoo that were living in for me. It was, it was a good, was a, we had some yes. very interesting stuff and, you know, some good nonsense and also some really intelligent people mm. wanting to discuss the watershed thing and why there actually isn't one in radio, so we just never know. So, in other words, we can say doo-doo at any time of the day. Well, um, I, what I was saying actually, was, go on. actually, if, if I say doo-doo in the middle of the night, even if it's past the watershed, I still get in trouble for it. Well, th what I was saying to, to, to people calling is that it, to, to two, two people wanted to know what they can do on the human zoo and what they can't do on the human mm. zoo. They regard themselves as sort of semi-broadcasters, or at least part of the show, which is great. Mm. That's the idea. Um, and what I had to explain to them is that there isn't a rule book on it. You, you don't know until you've done something that's considered unacceptable that yeah. you've done something that's considered unacceptable. Yeah, no, it's, it's a wacky system. If somebody complains, then it's unacceptable. Uh, if somebody can play well, often no. I mean, it, uh, in the in the sense that the people, the no, authorities, the, the radio authority. I mean, you could you could swear all you want right now, and if there's no complaints, the radio authority won't do anything. They that's can't just you know. True. 
So if somebody complains, then they have to investigate it, which, which I always thought was kind of weird. So if one person disagrees with you well, or me or something we say, they, in a sense, can set the agenda by getting the whole of the radio authority. You really shouldn't have told people that. Yeah, no, no, I like that. Did you not? No, no, because half the bad thing is. explaining that. Did you not think to yourself, oh, no, 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 because because more often than not, you know, there's a there's a, a bulletin that goes out. Yeah. But it's a quarterly, isn't it? I don't know. The complaints bulletin from the uh, the radio authority and the broadcasting standards yeah. uh, no, I, council. I, 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 I and all that. of the all of the people in the industry yeah. read this thing when it comes out. So all of your mates, my mates. Yeah. Are in radio, read this thing. To me, that's that's the best PR going. Yeah. You're getting one of those things, that's and right. Mason start ringing, going, "Oh, I saw you in the bulletin." What did you? I was telling about the, the the complaint that was upheld last time round that most amused me about the radio station that had a complaint against so. it upheld. They they said it uh, on the basis that they said it was Monday when in fact it was Saturday. Which is one of the and, oldest tricks. Uh, well, uh, an old April Fool's joke. Somebody thing. complained, and it had to be upheld because, and this was interesting because it was Saturday. That was that was uh, on that basis. The authorities upheld the complaint. Yeah, okay. that's accurate. Because it was outright. Right. Mm. The, the listener I said, have, "I wouldn't want that." You know, the listener said, yeah. <laughs> "No, I'll tell you, it's a job I wouldn't want." I've seen things come around in the complaints bulletin because you know we all do read this. Uh, Mr. Joe Boggs complained that he had won a BG CD on local small FM and never got his BG CD. And this is you know. It's, we're paying as taxpayers or whoever is paying for this august body, the radio authority, and all of this, and they have to investigate all of these different claims. So even something like I didn't get my BG CD goes to the radio authority. They put up a full investigate statement from the from the complainant, statement from the broadcaster, you know, statement from the authority. Well, the uh, the person got his BG CD in the end. Statement uh, not upheld. <laughs> It, the thing is, I think when you're doing when you're doing a show, and when you're listening to a show, and when you're taking part in a show on the phone, you know, you mustn't be thinking where can I go wrong. You've got to be thinking where where am I where, where, where can I go right? How can I get out of it? How can I get the hell out? <laughs> How do I cover my ass? How can I go off on holiday? <laughs> Bye, Charlie. <laughs> have a good holiday. I'm out of here. I will do. I'll be listening. Have a good show. Cheers, Ash. Yeah, have a good holiday.